You are now listening to the Save Cast, the number one old school RuneScape podcast featuring guests from all across Gelenor. To support this podcast, visit the Patreon link in the description. All right, welcome to the Save Cast number 96 with Alkin. Alkin, how you doing this fine evening? I got up recently from a nice nap at 7 p.m. because that's uh, <laughs> how it works for YouTubers and streamers, isn't it? I did too, actually. That's, that's I, I, sad, bro. Yeah, I just woke, I woke up from a nap. I had a really good day, though. I like I had a, like a pretty full day. I, I've actually been waking up quite, I don't know, like at a reasonable hour, I guess, for like normal human standards, like 8, 8 a.m. ish. So. That is yeah. actual normal. I thought you meant like mid, like noon or something. No, 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 not that. Like not that normal. I'm talking like real normal, like 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 the nine to five real work, yeah, real job like, people, like that okay. kind of stuff. Yeah, it's been weird. Well, I have two brothers that live with me, and they go to work, and they wake up at about like six forty five a.m. ish. So oh, they, really? Okay. Yeah, they end up when kind I, of waking uh, me up. But yeah. When I lived with my mom, she woke up at like six thirty to go to work and. I would still be awake normally. She'd be like, why are you still up? I'm like, eh, hey, it is what it is. But she yeah, got used I've, to it. You should just tell her, like, you'll eventually learn to stop asking questions. Just, she got just, used to it, for sure. Work. Yeah. Now, um... I think there was always a bit of disappointment. There. <laughs> like, like, Come on, son. Yeah, a little tone in her voice, a little bit disappointed. Yeah, um... But those midday naps, man, they really do hit. I mean, mine's more like a... I guess it was like 5 p.m. Or like 4 p.m. when I took my nap, so it was nice. I think I started taking those a good amount when I like started streaming because I can't I can't stream when I'm extremely tired. It just doesn't work. Oh, it's I always horrible. take a nap before it. Yeah. Yeah, the problem with me napping is eventually it gets to the point where it becomes like just a second sleep. I mean, it seriously, years back. Okay, so I've been almost streaming for like four years now, and they, they would get into these vicious cycles of eventually my normal sleep is four hours, and then my nap is four hours. So it's just like two oh, different... That happened to me too. Yeah. You horrible. just couldn't prevent it. You, you kept waking up every four hours. <laughs> No, it's horrible. Yeah, and then, and then you have like super high energy for about two hours right afterward, and then it's just like crash for the next four until you go back to sleep. It's horrible. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, so first off, I want to say big congrats on two hundred mil Slayer on the hardcore Iron Man first ever. Are you gonna put like clapping emojis in the background for the noise? <laughs> Do that one, just a little one small edit. <laughs> this isn't like a Tor Vesta video or like a based after dark. This is the Sebe cast, damn. This is, this is just completely raw. Completely okay. raw, so. You can't you can't actually hear me at all, can you, in terms of like the echo? Because I'm not, I'm, not I'm not on a headset. No, you sound perfect. Okay. Yes. I don't ever use headset. I don't know if that's normal or not. No, it sounds great. I mean, it, prob it, it actually probably sounds like shit now. I just can't even tell, but it, it actually really does sound good. But my audience is probably like, you messed up. It's echoing all the time. No, it sounds it's great. Um, it's, it's good enough. Yeah. So 200 mil all on, or sorry, 200 mil Slayer on the hardcore. Get ahead of yourself, bro. Let, let, let's take a little step or a few steps back. So there was a time where you weren't even a hardcore Iron Man, and you started pretty late into the game. So, uh, like, uh, oh, you mean like the hardcore mode? You mean? Yeah, yeah, hardcore mode. I mean, I thought you meant RuneScape. I was like, no, how no, far no. back we go? <laughs> um, yeah, I think I started like five. I think I started five months late, but I'm pretty sure the top like five right now. I think we all started late. Oh, really? That's always yeah, how I mean, it ends I, up working, though. Let's be. I honest. think so. I'm pretty sure fifth started a bit after me, even. I Is don't it... know when Farmer started or when Lydia started. Is that actually his fifth hardcore? I have no clue, but it probably <laughs> he probably didn't get too far in his other ones. I'd imagine, and just yeah. this is the one that did really well. Yeah. Is he is he gonna get 200 mil all? Oh, for sure, dude. He he might get second on the Iron Man high scores. Honestly, there's a, if Dids doesn't like speed up, he might beat Dids. He's Holy I think he's already I think he's already third. I think that's already there. That's insane. So if he goes hard and Dids doesn't, uh, yeah, he could get second, which would be hilarious. That is insane. Apparently, like Iron Higer even started like a year after Iron Man. I think I I've heard that like he's. Is this think, like a thing where everyone starts late so they have to catch up so they feel like they, have, they need to play more than usual? Yeah, it, it must be the case because I'm pretty sure even Link's Titan, I know like, maybe he started at the beginning as kind of like funding his RS3, that's what I've heard, but yeah. I, I don't know, it, it happens with every single player. Uh, I know like Sean Bay, who ended up being third, he started like two years late and he just went fucking hard and he got ranked yeah. three, which is just insane to me. 
Yeah, I think I think he might have been lucky enough to not do any bar, uh, melee slayer. He did like all barrage slayer, didn't he? Probably. That, yeah, that, that was like a really good time to start when barrage slayer became the meta. Oh yeah, I mean, truly, if you wanted to, I don't know, be super efficient, just don't even log in yet. Don't even be born yet, and you'll probably like. It really does like how it, that is how it works. Yeah, just keep waiting till microtransactions come out into this game. That they. You know what? As much as we love to say, like, microtransactions will... Well, there are, first of all, there already are with Bonds, but, like, true microtransactions yeah. in this game... Bonds like, is, like, a moderate one. Most people don't care about that too much. Yeah, yeah. I really do have this suspicion that eventually it will be flooded with them, um, but like, this is, like, years from now to the point where, like, we've all just kind of rationalized and we're like yeah yeah whatever we're all in our 40s at this point <laughs> just to send it yeah, that's how it normally goes but I, I, if as long as they don't bring it to iron man and you know we're playing the right mode then that's i guess true. that's true i've always because i know rs3 like they were considering spins when it first got released oh god and i think I, I remember making a video going like y'all are a bunch of idiots dude <laughs> and then they revoked the idea they like switched it they're like that's no good. spins then that's uh, it completely saved the game mode, but it probably lost them a lot of money. <laughs> literally. I mean, I I definitely <laughs> understand when game companies want to just flood MTX because truly they're just making bank at that point. And at the end of the day, it's just a video game. So it's not like they have this moral obligation or whatever. But man, Iron Man with absolutely no microtransactions, just like the most beautiful form of gaming. It's so nice. Yeah, I think, I think RS3 Iron Man is quite beautiful because it does... It, it kind of removes a lot of the shitty things of RS3, which is like microtransactions and stuff. Yeah, I've literally never played RS3, and I still have a bad taste just because of what the community has just talked about. I have literally never to this day logged into RS3. and it, uh, It's very good for PVMing, to be honest. It's very like... I mean, there is like a rotation for like every combat style, I'm pretty sure by now, but different bosses, I guess, require different rotations mm. of like the abilities. Yeah, it's... I feel like that game honestly could be pretty damn fun. Like I hate to admit that, you know, I just absolutely hate it now. But seriously, I feel yeah, like yeah. I feel like I could have an absolute blast with that game if I give myself the chance. And that chance needs to come organically. If I force myself into it, I'm gonna find every single flaw with it. But if it comes to the point where like OSRS makes some horrible blunders and I'm just like forced to go to RS3, I might actually genuinely enjoy it. Plus it'll it would like expand my game knowledge and the lore in general of just RuneScape. And I think that would be like healthy for me as a content creator, but Yeah, unless like the views are like goes goes freaking horrible or something. <laughs> yeah, I mean yeah but it might it might even get better to be if, honest. If you like, see <laughs> if you yeah. see me go into R S three, like the career's already been over. I mean, no, I'm kidding. Uh, it could it could be revived because I don't know how many content creators they actually have in R S three. There's a lot more competitive, like on old school, obviously. So maybe you could do well actually in that section. Yeah, are you aware of, uh, like, how many full, uh, I know this is a weird question, but, like, how many full-time RS3 streamers do you think there are that can actually make, like, a living from it? Like, I have no, I've never even browsed the category. I should sure enough to know. I'm, there's at least, like, five, I'd say, minimum. <laughs> okay. Ten but, max. But, <laughs> I have no idea. I mean, it, dep it depends on like we mean like yeah, full time, like they're enjoying life or they're barely hanging on. Is that like <laughs> which one are we going Because there, there might be some like smaller content creators, obviously that yeah. are trying still. You know? Sometimes hanging on is is the enjoyment in life. They are enjoying life. Like, I that's, I, that's I was true. enjoying life eating ramen first few months of streaming. It was great. Yeah, it builds character, right? Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> let's take an even bigger step back and let's talk about your dipping your toes into content creation for the first ever time back years and years ago. I think it was, a. I just literally scrolled through your YouTube when I was making the uh, announcement tweet and I was like, yeah, it's about 10 years. I, it looks like, I don't know if you had videos prior to that, but um, I think I have a, go to, um type this and type the letters N-U-M. N-U-M. B-E, no wait. Yeah, B-E-2. B-E-2. Okay. And then B-O-S-S. Number two boss. Okay. That is my old channel. Holy. I'm pulling this You can up. like probably see some of the older videos on there. 11. Okay. So yeah, these are 12 years ago. Holy shit. Okay. Yeah. I think, I think I moved over to my new one because those ones had like music in them. And this is back when like you had to try to get partner with like no music and stuff. <laughs> so I, I was horrible. like, fuck this old channel. I'm just going to move over. 
It was, just, it was too many videos. To, so I, I like limited how many videos it has, but it still has like music in them. I think I got one bill like XP in one of those videos on that channel. Yeah, it's actually your first video. I you guys can't see it. I, I have it like pulled up on my end, but um, it says number one boss reaches one bill XP, and as your first video on here, I don't know if there was. I think I deleted a bunch of stuff okay, before that. Must that. be the case. But yeah, I wasn't that good. I mean that I that truly shows like this is this guy's a gamer before a content creator. The guy first video is a bill xp like i get it, man I'm kind of just addicted isn't it <laughs> big big addiction uh okay we, we, we so, call that gaming these days don't we? <laughs> we call it gaming all right so alkin what inspired you to start streaming and uh yeah i don't know like what how did it all come together Ooh, this is one i probably should have thought about before um i'd go with I think there was a point where like I went on to Twitch for a bit. Like I didn't go on Twitch much back in the day before I streamed especially. Um, but when I went on Twitch, it seemed like the community on Twitch was very sweet in terms of like they're very well connected with their content creators. And I didn't really feel like I had that on YouTube, honestly, because it was just like you just kind of post a video, people comment like, yo, your video sucks. And then like you don't see them again until the next video. Whereas like with Twitch, they're like always kind of there every day. So I think I like the aspect of like the community. It's more community engaged probably. Yeah. No, so I think I, I think that's one reason I was like, I don't really feel like I have like a community. I kind of just have like videos being posted. See, so that's, that's that like the opposite it. of uh, solo mission. I had him on like a year or so ago and he was saying like he would stream, but he really liked just the upload of video and just boom, you're done. You know, you just kind of like lay back and just see the Oh, it's way stuff. easier than Twitch if we're oh, getting yeah. into that. Oh, it's way easier. <laughs> but, uh, that shit is a dream job, bro. You just post yeah. video and leave. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. That's true. I mean, plus, I mean, who really wants to live stream on YouTube? That YouTube? Okay, I have to say this. YouTube's audience, at least the people that comment, I mean, it's lawless on in YouTube comments. At least in Twitch, people are generally... This sounds crazy, but I feel like Twitch actually people are generally respectful, and if they're not, they're like insta banned. But with YouTube, it's like, dude, I'd I'd be scared it's going live on YouTube genuinely and just having it's probably a harder show. to type shit to someone when they're live as opposed to like a comment that they might not have been see. That's true. Actually, yeah, so that's, that's probably true. why. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be like it just would be harder as like a piece of shit human to like be, type you're a piece of shit <laughs> while they're like with their face cam on. <laughs> that that, like it, it's a bit of a different aspect, so it's probably why. That is actually a really yeah. That that's exactly it actually. I do think that Twitch or YouTube has very good potential with streaming. Obviously, though, I really want it to actually. I, I think uh, I think most people that have a channel on YouTube would do better on YouTube streaming, but not maybe not financially though. That stuff has to be figured out over time. But view count wise, it would have to be way better than Twitch for them. Yeah, I get excited about YouTube actually like going really hard on pushing live streaming a bit more just because it really does feel like twitch has no real competition i'm surprised they kind of don't i mean they have the video platform of like everything the whole world the one just a few extra steps would be like twitch streaming and then maybe like friggin uh, like streaming movies pretty much is like the next step just everything on youtube pretty much is what it's gonna yeah, be isn't yeah it? i mean they've already got majority with youtube because youtube is like everywhere in the world twitch mm -hmm. is like kind of just mostly America, Canada, a little bit of like this and that. Yeah, all the DGens go to Twitch too. There's I, yeah. most normal people don't even know what Twitch is. Yeah, That's definitely not. Uh, every time I think about like if something's mainstream, I just think if my mom knows about it. Like my mom knows <laughs> yeah. who LeBron James is, but probably not Giannis, which is like a basketball yeah, yeah, player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's I always just use my mom's an example for like who's well known in the world and who's not. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. Yeah. All right, so. There's a lot to talk about today with everything going on in the game. Raids 3 came out lately, and uh, the Winter Summit's, uh, like, what, three weeks away, I think? Almost, uh, actually, what's, under, under What's Winter weeks. Summit? Winter Summit's their RuneFest. <laughs> oh. Wait, what? They're announcing, like, next year, or what? Yeah, so I oh, think... Oh, oh, you mean, like, they normally do it at RuneFest, okay. Yeah, yeah, So I think December 10th is when they're just going to be announcing just their... Oh, like, game updates for the next yeah, year, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I forgot we called it that. I don't, I yeah, I was I was calling it Winter Rune, Summit. RuneFest reveals or something like yeah, that. Yeah, Well, the thing is, like, they called it Summer Summit the the year prior, and now when they say Winter Summit, I'm trying to say, like, Winter Summer. I'm like, what am I trying to say right now? Like, there's, yeah. there's too many weird words, you know? So, 
So like pretty much a reveal for the next year. Exactly. Yeah. And I have a, like a couple predictions. One of them is basically like I think there's going to be a clue scroll expansion. Like I'm almost like new collection slots. Oh, that sounds great, dude. That that <laughs> that really is part of the problem of this game, but also part of the beauty. It's what makes it. it's what makes people keep playing. So I it's going to keep yeah. working. I, know. <laughs> I, I could only imagine if they ever released the the 200 mil cap and did something else. Oh god, like a, like a prestige shit, pretty much. Dude, what what do you actually think about that? A prestige? Of... Uh, I would. I would. I think it'd work for RS3 because they would just sell you more XP. Yeah. Because a lot of people in that game just <laughs> PVM, make crazy money, then spend the profits yeah. on like 200 mil. Yeah. For old school, uh, it would probably, I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, 200 mil is already still very long term, but maybe over the years it gets easier and easier and then prestige might be like more talked about. So... In my head, okay, I don't really know how prestige would work, but it, in one scenario, I think what would be cool is if prestige actually put your stat back at level one. Yeah, so, that's, I think that's like. Oh, the is whole that plan, actually but... how it works? It's, it's not just putting you back at like base ninety nine. No, no, okay. you get two hundred mil resets you to level one. Holy sh! Okay, that would be. Yeah, cool. and then that's like it's kind of like um, they have prestige on RS three with like when you kill something 60,000 times, you reset it to zero, and then it says zero kills and one prestige. Ooh. So if you killed 200,000 of something, it would say like uh, 20,000 kills and three prestige. Damn. Or no, wait. Some, something like that. Yeah, three yeah something like that. So it would be, that's how it would pretty much look on, I don't know what the high scores would look like that, but that's, they already kind of had the prestige system, I guess, where you reset something to zero. Mm -hmm. Dang. Okay, yeah. I mean, they're, Obviously, this game is already extremely long-term. Prestige is probably not necessary in any regard whatsoever right now in old school. Maybe RS3 is a completely different story. It probably is. Um, I guess if you think about it, the collection log is kind of like prestige. It's like not possible to complete. And I guess yeah. if they add prestige, it'd be also not possible to complete that. So it would yeah. just be like a skilling aspect of collection log, I guess. Because you can't ever finish skilling then if there's a prestige. That's just true. like you kind of you can't complete collection log. Yeah, that's true. Some people have different... I Actually, I want to hear your take on this. So, like, some people get really annoyed with a grind being endless. For example, I don't know, boss cases. They never end. There is no cap. You can just keep killing more bosses. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is that a problem in your eyes? Or are you more of, like... I don't know. There's players that just really love the fact that at 200 mil XP, it's done. You're done. No more thinking about it. But with other aspects of the game, it's just, like... It's endless. I think if I think if they were to cap KCs, then it would might be even worse because then everyone has to go and get those max KCs, like the cap. That's true. Whereas if there's no cap, no one feels the need to keep going. Yeah, it's kind of just free for all. You just do whatever you want. It would look cool though to see people like capping a KC, I guess, in terms yeah. of like, the high scores. Yeah. You just scroll down to their boss KCs; they're all like thirty thousand or whatever the hell the cap would be. See, th I actually do think that would be a pretty cool system. Obviously, we'd have to come to an agreement on what the arbitrary number would be. But, like, think if it was just, like, 10,000 or something for most bosses. Are you thinking, like, how cool it would be to, like, be locked into a rank one on a boss, Casey? No, I mean, I'm not saying that exactly. I'm, I'm really just... Uh, I don't, there, there have been people... I personally have no problem with endlessness. I think it's cool. But there are people that really get depressed over the idea that whatever they're about to do that's not skilling is endless and it just is like pointless basically to go for in the first place people like an endpoint some people like an endpoint so um, like beyond collection log endpoint pretty much then for the boss yeah but yeah, as long as, as long as the number go up it's not done pretty much yeah the, <clears throat> yeah i guess so there's a thing in the poh that like shows your rank for clue scrolls it's like yo you are legend status i don't even know how that ranking system works it's really fucked it's, it makes no sense but if they were to do something like that, like, uh, I don't know, just set some arbitrary limits and get your, like, legendary boss killer status, legendary collection log, log I, don't, I don't even know what it would be, but... Is that the thing at the clue scroll guy? He has, like, a board there by him? Yeah, oh, but hmm. it makes no sense, because I've heard of people that have done, like, like, 600 easy clue scrolls, like only and they're like legendary <laughs> i'm like what oh like, they're, they're probably just scaled all the same then probably yeah i i just have no idea how it all works but well, they they could do like a thing where you achieve like you get like uh like those clue scroll items that you get guaranteed drop rate or something they could do something like that where if you complete like a thousand of this one and this one and this one you'll get it or something like that 
That would be sick. something a prestigious item, maybe. Then I guess that would be hella sick. I. What are your thoughts on combat achievements? Because that's one of those things that uh, you do a set list of tasks and then you get rewarded. You get your little helmet or whatever like that. Um, uh, do you mean like the new proposed uh, things or just in general? Just in general, combat achievements. I don't really care much about the new stuff that they proposed. Mainly just... Uh, I'm a fan of it, I think, even though I'll, I'll probably never do Grandmaster. But uh, I think they're unique, for sure. Do you think the rewards are fine? Do you think like something like that should give rewards? And the reason I kind of bring this up, I, I know it just sounds random, but if they were to do something for Clue Scrolls, where like you've done all the like 100 masters, 200 elites, and so forth, should you get rewarded for that? Like, should you get a perk that's actually like, damn, that's good? Like similar to what uh, this game? is what RS3 has. They have, I believe, they have like an entire shop for Clue Scrolls, mm. and you can actually buy a Clue Scroll outfit with points, I believe. And I think, so when you go to like a stash unit, if your stash unit is full, you just literally do the emote without having to wear the gear as long as you have the clue outfit on. That is sick. I, I would not mind that for uh, <laughs> That for is school. sick. You don't have to take your shitty yeah. gear off every freaking two oh. seconds. You just, you just go beside where you would normally do the emote and just do it in your clue scroll gear. Bruh. That's it. That's yeah, cool. that, I, would not, I wouldn't hate that. You know what? I gotta say, it is kind of nice having old school with like the big brother of RS3 being in there and like we can kind of like take the good yeah, ideas we, we, and you leave like out the ideas from there yeah i mean <laughs> people like don't like the game but it doesn't mean like there's no such thing as a good update over there and that's uh that's one of the unique updates they definitely took stash units from old school that was like the original old school idea and then they expanded that with like a quest or a, a clue scroll shop or something that's cool though i actually kind of like that they both kind of take uh the good parts of the game updates that come out and it's the same yeah. with us like we take the good stuff from rs3 and uh it's just cool because yeah, I'll be honest, RS3 really does have a lot of amazing updates. There's been ideas that have popped into my head. I'm like, that's so cool. And they're like, dude, that's already in RS3. I'm like, god damn it. Yeah, well, they have like the Inferno thing now, too. I don't think it's the same, obviously, but that was mm -hmm. kind of cool. They, uh, they introduced that there. Yeah. If they it's... do more things like that, it's probably for the best. It just seems like uh, maybe bring the communities kind of together more. Is that difficult, by the way, that Inferno for RS3? I've never done it. Is, is it supposed to be like the hardest thing, or is it just kind of like a mid-level... It's definitely not like as hard as learning the Inferno. I can't talk about the Inferno actually. <laughs> Next subject. <laughs> I, I have no idea. I, right. It's probably it's probably. I think like sick nerd streamed it. I think he did it the first day. Okay. Um, oh. I think there's like a hard mode version of it, which is much harder. I think. Mm, I see. All right, we got to talk about it, Inferno. I'm sorry, I, man. You, you, I, I knew that was gonna be a question. Yeah. Uh, there probably are some questions on the Twitter topics, but I'm just going to ask you, what do you, what are your thoughts on the Inferno and, uh, when will you ever go for your Infernal Cape? Uh, I've done like two attempts in the past when like the combat achievements came out. I think the elite one was like get to wave 30 or something mm -hmm. and I've never done Inferno. So I was like, okay, I can probably do that. And I thought by the time I do that, I might enjoy it so much where I just <laughs> keep going. Nope. That enjoyment never came. I don't think. Yeah. I think it's just that I just don't know what I'm doing in there. I only, I just know like one tile, which is a safe spot, which is like the <laughs> the north pillar one, and that's like the only tile I ever used. Yeah. I think if I knew everything and I studied it, I'd probably be more inclined to do it. Yeah. But at the same time, I just don't have any motivation for it because it's not like something I think about every day. Yeah, it's also not like your strong suit. I feel like you've, at least in my <laughs> eyes, you've always been like XP grinder rather than like do the next difficult piece of content that's yeah i just i don't think about the inferno cape much i just sometimes even <clears throat> camp like a max cape even instead of a fire cape because i just like the convenience of having a teleport trade on me oh yeah i'm excited yeah. for my uh new avernic that, that is one of the combat achievement rewards at least for grandmasters you're gonna get like your avernic um cosmetic kit that attaches to the hilt so my yeah. avernic now is gonna have a teleport to uh i guess the inferno bank but that's like such a shitty teleport but it's still a teleport i guess but yeah like a budget crafting i guess it'd still be unlimited right yeah yeah unlimited that's cool then you can probably like if you forget your max cape i guess but then you have to have your defender on you mm -hmm. is it gonna give like stats at all for the defender like prayer bonus no so it's still just gonna act as an avernic but now you're gonna get all the oh i guess there's like what two teleports on it just trollheim and yeah moral rack yeah yeah i'm not i'm not against that that's a pretty good idea yeah. So they definitely they definitely did a lot of good updates for the uh, the combat achievements. Some of them seem like extreme, but like at the same time, 
it's a pretty like hard thing to achieve so makes yeah. sense yeah it's just it's just tough to balance things because it's the same thing with the max cape is when the max cape first came out it was nothing there was no perks to it and then all of a sudden they just went fucking overboard in my opinion it was absolutely overboard like the tit from no yeah, our, perks to just every single thing in a game yeah our, our max cape is very op i think uh rs3 has like three perks you can add to your max cape and that's about it see that's a way better way to do it, 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 it yeah but we have everything which is uh, a bit extreme pretty good for hardcore too because it's like a ring of life in there so oh, you yeah. can bring whatever ring you want oh, so that's like a huge benefit for sure oh yeah for and hardcore. it's an accumulator oh yeah it's amazing. Yeah, fucking like HP cape as well. Here's everything. Yeah, it's pretty nice. What? Well, it's okay. When Max Cape first came out, were you already maxed on old school? Well, on your main? Oh, yeah, I don't think so. Or like when the perks? When did it out? come out? I don't even know. I'm just. What What were your I, thoughts? I guess on it when the Max Cape first just had a shit ton of perks to it. Were you kind of like whatever, or were you kind of? When it first came in, didn't have the teleports on it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, like when they did, like when when the Max Cape did all of a sudden have all those perks. Like, were you a fan of it, or were you like, this is bad for the game? Uh, no, I wasn't against it because back then, like maxing was still quite like a big accomplishment. Obviously, like it was hard to do. It was in 2015 it came out. Okay, um, so there there wasn't that many Max players back then, so it was kind of unique to see the cape. But you know, obviously, over time, people have all achieved it now. Mm -hmm. I'm not really against the teleports on it, though. I don't think. I think the teleports are fun. The extra benefits, especially for like combat event, are kind of pretty big. Yeah. But no, I like the max cape. I'd still say. Yeah. I guess it just works for this game, but. Uh, You're right. It kind of. If does. it came in with just a few things, I don't think nobody would have complained either. Yeah. But maybe over time, we'd have probably just asked for more and more things to be added to it. If they came out with a completion escape, what would you like want to see from it? Like what requirements? Yeah, and rewards, or I guess like, should it give any more additional perks? Like, because I'm actually a little bit unaware what a what a completionist cape does in RS3. Is it just a max cape? Purely cosmetic. Okay, but it's just like a max cape with like a trim on it. That's it. Okay, so but you still get your perks from the max cape. Yeah, yeah, it's the same as max cape. Yeah. What would you uh, want to see from old school? Same, same thing. I think I'm cool with it having no extra benefits. Uh, the most maybe would be like you can attach the assembler to it to give the stats that the assembler would give you instead of just the ammunition thing. Mm. But but even and like I'd attach like an oh, would that be OP attaching a inferno cape with it though? Probably too much. Just do it. Just do it. But at this that's point. so. Do inferno <laughs> and dude, that means you don't have to bring a cape switch at all. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, I, I'd probably go with cosmetics just because I think the cape's already OP just as a max cape. You know what? Speaking of that, speaking of that clue outfit from RS3, we don't even have to do any gear salt. Like, can we just do that with completionist outfit? Just a completionist outfit just says every single possible thing. No more switching ever. Just go to anything you ever want to do and just wear your completionist outfit. I, I, I like bang some of my switches on my PVM sometimes. I'm just too lazy to get the extra DPS. I don't have, I don't have the greatest wrist after all the RuneScape playing. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, complete. I don't know. It's. It gets me worried mainly because completionist cape in my head. Again, I don't really have like the data to know what RS3 has done with it and how it kind of affected the game that way. But I feel like in old school, if they were to come out with a completionist cape, it like sort of hinders future updates at that point. Because then people want to vote no to everything just to keep their completionist trim or whatever like that they're like oh i don't want to have this new skill hey, in the game all, all they'd have to do is add a grace period where you have a certain amount of time where you can still wear it before you lose the ability to wear it okay so like if a new update comes out like let's just say you need to finish giant's foundry whatever for whatever reason for the completion escape you could wear it for like a week or two after the update and then you have to go finish the giant's foundry mm. so you can still wear it the day of release but you only like have like a week or two before you can do like lose it I wonder if they should do that with combat achievements, because I know whenever they come out with new stuff, like they came out with the next uh, tasks, everyone lost their helmets, like their Zuck helmets or their Jack yeah, helmets. Yeah, they can't wear anymore. anymore. Yeah. yeah, immediately. Uh, I guess that's yeah, it probably wouldn't be horrible. Yeah, it's not the end of It'd the be world like anyway. A decent amount of time to get it back. It'd be different with the max uh, new skill coming out though, because then that would be. I think with a new skill coming out, you, I think everyone should probably lose the cape probably. I agree with that. Just because it'd be fun to see everyone wearing their freaking capes again. Like, not max capes. I know. <laughs> That'd be funny. Do you think a new skill will ever hit this game? Do you, do you think we'll ever get one? 
one day, but I'm not against her like four if we get one. Like I'm just whatever neutral about it. Okay. But yeah. I, I would I would kind of like to have one in to some aspect, but it has to be very good because it's gonna probably be the only skill we have added. That's true. It, well, it'll be the only skill added if it's a bad skill. If it ends up being bad, that will have been the only sk new skill. But if it really just, I don't know. I guess if it does amazingly well, then more people might be wanting another it, one. Exactly. So we'll have to see. I I have my hopes up that uh, we'll get a new skill within the next two years, or at least like on the verge of it. Maybe not the not full release yet, but at least we'll know what. Do you we're have any ideas for one or? I want to see sailing. I think sailing's the best idea that we've seen so far. Now, it's not really fleshed out, but I think the potential of it, of traveling to new places, having randomized sea encounters, looting randomized islands, and just being able to like build your ship with construction. And I don't know. I feel like people also need combat with a new skill people whenever there's been a new skill proposed that has nothing to do with combat people just get super bored they're just like i don't want this this sounds boring. yeah com combat's pretty big these days honestly yeah which i'm not like the biggest advocate for but i, I understand the community did not enough to be like it's pointless to try to go for something like bard the music skill or like warding it, I, yeah. we need something that's just like crazy i think sailor was it the artisan it. skill that was like the skilling for slayer a long time ago yeah that i'm i was not a fan of that it like obviously if we if we only could have one skill and it had to be artisan i'd probably be like all right fine like i just want something new in this game but like that was probably like the worst idea in my opinion it, was it pretty much just like go chop trees and get like a reward after like a yeah, contract pretty much that's the way i look at it it's very cynical there's probably like some really great things great perks to the skill as well but seriously it was just like you are now gate kept from doing any skill unless you're doing it through artisan which is just like oh they, they could have made it so like if, if it was like chop trees you could swap the woodcutting xp for this the the artisan xp Ooh. so whenever you go to your task whatever xp you would get for the other skill Ooh. you would get it for artisan instead okay that's cool I like that. I mean, or or you have, like, the choice, maybe, so you could do, like, a 50-50 split or something. Yeah, yeah, whatever, like, ratio you'd want to do, maybe. Interesting. See, that would actually be all right. I just wonder how people would feel about that. Yeah, because I remember that was a thing where, like, if you're 200 mil, you're just completely screwed. Now, they could make it if you're 200 mil or you're 99. You can cross off that skill. Uh, but then that might be, like, too easy where, like, you just get all the really easy contracts or something. I don't know mm -hmm. how they're going to be designed, obviously, but... Uh, they have that kind of again in RS3 where like, you know, daily um, daily challenges like RS3 has? I've heard of them. You like log in and every day there's like a new challenge you have. Well, if you have like a 99 in that skill or a 120, you can remove that potential to get that daily challenge. Mm. So you can like want, you can get like a specific daily challenge every day pretty much if you want it for a specific skill. Okay. Yeah, so that, that it'd probably just become that if they were to like make it so you could pick the skills, but yeah, I wouldn't mind if they made it so you uh, will get artists in XP while you're doing the actual skill. Yeah, I, there like there is definitely potential with all skills. I think artisan. I just kind of looked at it and I saw like the negatives, and I never really looked at the pros of it. The, the rewards they were doing back then, <laughs> nobody would care about now. I don't think. I think one of the rewards was like you could have the chance to make double nats <laughs> be before ninety one, and people were freaked out. <laughs> now nats are like one point each. <laughs> People freaked out. So it, it really like that wouldn't even matter anymore yeah. so you know times have changed from that yeah. but i'm not sure what the other rewards were obviously but I, i'm assuming what their way of looking at it was that slayer is like by far the most favorite skill so they wanted yeah, to bring it yeah. to like skilling in general which makes sense but just yeah. depends on how they uh design it yeah i think also an an idea like artisan doesn't necessarily have to be a skill it could really just be so similar to farming contracts where you get extra benefit if you do decide to do it through Artisan, which would be more of like a mini game. Yeah, um, for sure. And then, yeah, I don't know. Though. There's there's a bunch of different ideas. I know like warding, sailing, bard. Uh, I don't know if you ever heard much about bard. That was like the Reddit post. And I, I had gentle tractor and caveman only talk about it on the cast and they just went like super in depth with it it's basically like the music skill where like you 
can make instruments and like those instruments can like that help sounds you lame. in the game. I know. And um, the <laughs> vast majority of the community did find it lame, unfortunately, because it's just, it's not combat. And, but there were some cool things to it. For Wait, example, what the music instruments do like boost your stats or something? No, no, no. So like one, one instrument was going to be, I guess the equivalent of an aggro potion in RS3 where like you would oh, make a like war drum and you could just carry around this fucking war drum. And then like, whenever you pound it, it's just like, boom, everything's aggro to you again. Um, oh, okay. That, and, that, that, that's like a good idea that comes from a skill, but I don't know if like a music skill sounds attractive at all. Yeah, it, it it had obviously like it had its flaws like anything, and it really does not cater to most people. Now, I am a little bit musically inclined in real life, so I saw like the cool little niches of it and just like how it kind of interconnects. And I thought it was like pretty cool as like a musician, just kind of like saying I'm not a musician, but like seeing it through a musician's eyes like it really does bring life to the game in other areas there is so i would not even do it justice by trying to explain it but there he made this huge post on it and there were, were some really cool ideas there were some ideas that are like hey, this is just like overinflated at this point but truly i think, like, think the, some of those ideas could work just on a different skill like the reward is like a different like the reward doesn't have to be necessarily the same as like the skill it could just make a side benefit yeah oh yeah so like it could, be, it could be like the skill can be like a placeholder whereas the rewards are like the things that we think about first yeah i mean i think a lot of the rewards that did come from there do not have to be musically intertwined whatsoever like a war yeah. drum could be something completely different and uh, yeah because i mean it's like an aggro pot in our street so it's like herb lore but they could be like you know anything really it was cool though because he also had this idea it was like the opposite instead of an uh, like a war drum to aggro there was like a little flute you could make that would make everything peaceful so like in any situation you're in you can just make ag like monster just not aggressive to you so i was like oh that's pretty cool for like a skiller you know but just wants to like cross um, yeah wolf mountain or so I, I, obviously very niche uses but like just, it was, there were some really cool things to it again the community i feel like had an over Overwhelming, resounding just no basically for it um feels like uh if it's like music it feels like it's like uh <laughs> like instruments it feels like that's kind of like an older generation thing these days it almost yeah. feels like yeah 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 that's probably why i don't think our generation's like all about instruments <laughs> no not at all like i don't know if we do we even have like big marching bands <laughs> like we used to back in the day yeah. i don't know i guess like schools might but yeah yeah that's, now, that's probably why yeah it definitely wasn't there, there were some other ideas that weren't there like Oh, oh, well, they've always brought up the ideas of bringing an RS3 skill to, uh, or not necessarily an RS3 skill, but like an older skill from RS3 uh, or from the original RuneScape, like summoning or dungeoneering. What would you think about one of those skills being introduced? I, oh, summoning is definitely no. That cannot work unless Ex they explain to the me, hell out of it. Explain to me why, because I never actually participated in summoning ever. So, well, it's mostly the bombs. The bombs hold like 30 items. Is that the biggest problem with it? Yeah, probably. I mean, there was not just bobs back then, but there was also flask potions, which hold six doses of a potion. So there's like an extra 50% potion, and then there's 30 more items in the pack yak. <laughs> or 28. So, so it, it got extreme, that's for sure. Okay. But were, um, were those the only like really OP things? Like what else did summoning offer that was... Uh, the Steel Titan, uh, it's kind of annoying. I had to keep using the special back in the day, and then they eventually added, like, an automatic special thing. <laughs> um, it, it could do, like, I don't know, like, 3,000 damage, like a 30 Jesus. out of nowhere sometimes with its spec. I don't oh, know okay, how many oh, specs you oh, could... not, not a 3,000. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just fucking one yeah, shot. Or 300, uh, whatever the scaling is, I forget. Yeah. I think it's 3,000. Yeah, 3,000. That'd be a 30. Okay. So it, it just, yeah... It, I don't know. It was kind of like a mini um, thrall, or sorry, a big thrall. Thrall mm. is a mini version of it. But uh, yeah, I don't. I think dungeoneering is an interesting one. I know some people wouldn't like it, probably, but I do think that dungeoneering was one of the skills that you know, like um, uh, what's it called? The agility place, the newer one. Uh, uh, sepulcher. Yeah, sepulcher is like. It took agility to like a new level where like your efficiency matters a lot and, there, yeah. and people will have different levels of efficiency. Dungeoneering was kind of like that because like if you had someone that was like a bad keyer, your XP rates would be affected by that. So it was like you can't really fuck up like making potions at a bank. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like the XP per hour kind of the same at all points for everyone. You can't really make that like a horrible XP rate. But dungeoneering was like if you have a good team, your XP rates are way higher than someone who has a bad team. 
Mm. So I like that aspect of it, as opposed to like, if you're just attacking a blood veld for a slayer task, there's not so much more you can do besides just sitting yeah. there and attacking it. You know what I mean? <laughs> just spam so it a little harder. It, 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 it just adds variety, I guess, to the skill. So yeah. it, I think in the way Dungeoneering brought back, um, or it brought like efficiency to the game a little bit, because people notice like if you do things quicker, you get more XP at the ending, or the floors are faster. Maybe the floor time is what motivated people to go faster in the dungeons. Because mm. back then, efficiency wasn't like that big of a thing. I think uh, like obviously Zarfot kind of implemented it a little bit with like multi-skilling stuff. And then Dungeoneering came out and if you were like good, you were just good. And then people got better. So I don't hate Dungeoneering. Um, the rewards would have to be reworked probably for sure. Yeah, I feel like at this point, I really would be okay with almost any skill coming in. Uh desperation I, it is desperation it truly <laughs> is but i i think sailing is what i really lean on mainly because just fresh they old school can make their own spins on it we can unlock new i was thinking like varlamore that place that's like on the lower coast of zaya that would be eventually added that place could be unlocked through sailing you know that's a high enough sailing yeah, yeah. level you just enter that port and like boom that's like the new sailing city where like i don't know you gotta have like 90 plus sailing that like those ideas to me sound really appealing i get excited you think about. they would make it so you could unlock teleports to each of these islands or you have to always take a boat there i don't know but i really think uh well first of all i think chartering and just boats in general should never have like an animation showing your fucking 2d little ship uh, drawn that is weird across yeah. across the whatever i'm trying to say i you mean like the dragon slayer one class kind of thing just I think any it makes you, like, watch your character. Yeah, anytime you have to watch your dude teleporting or like moving to yeah, another place, is, like god damn, like we we've moved past this. We're no longer eight years old. Like we just we need to get there now. Like quit yeah, showing uh, us the process. We're not we're not a, as amused as we used yeah. to be. <laughs> yeah, like That's dude, sure. bro. There's this thing called the Bodhi. It's uh right next. It's right on that river from barrows yeah, and yeah. morton yeah that thing takes i mean i'm genuinely like 16 seconds to just cut off the animation <laughs> and like by that time you could have just ran there it's like dude. that's funny I, I think i've taken that boat a few times i forget how long it was that boat sucks too because you have to pay 10 gp and there's no way of getting like a, a you know just a one-time fee like just take me here every time and who the hell carries around just like 10 gp when you're doing a clue scroll or something it's like oh my god yeah, that's a troll. even the one that like brings you to like the mulch island place or something. That one's that not boat? bad. That one's like instant. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that one is okay. Yeah. So I was thinking about the wrong boat, then I think. Yeah. The oh yeah yeah that one is also called Bodie though. There's two. Yeah. Bodies, that's, okay. Oh wait no no it's not called Bodie. It's called Swamp Bodie. That's the one I was thinking of. That's the one uh, by Barrows. Yeah. Oh okay, I see. Yes yes okay. Yeah yeah. yeah. I, I was looking at the other one that brings you to mulch. I was like, I swear that one's pretty quick. But maybe yeah, that one is dumb. quick. You're right. Then that one's actually called Bodhi. So I was, I was incorrect on that. Okay. Here is a topic from Furry Wall. And I think it kind of connects to what we were talking about earlier. What would you bring from RS3 to OSRS and vice versa? And then Iron Cub just wanted to reply. He said his total XP probably LMAO. No, I like having... Okay, I don't like having a fresh start too often, but once in a while. <laughs> I'm fucking tired of making new accounts. Um, ooh, well, we did discuss the clue scroll thing, obviously. That was yeah. a very nice one. Uh, oh, presets for sure, then, without a doubt. What are Presets, is, it's time for presets. Explain to me, explain to the audience as well. Like, what, what are your, What's your idea of presets? Do you actually not know what it is, or you just want I mean, to explain? I mean, I kind of do, but I want to know the extent of what presets really do. Is it just banking, or is it like... Uh, it is, yeah, just banking, pretty much. So you can, like, gear up with... Well, actually, it's not just banking. It's also inventory. Like, it's inventory and what you're wearing. So you can have, like, a preset for Theater of Blood, for example. Okay. Set up your inventory. Save your inventory. Set up your what you're wearing in your warden slot. Save that. And it'll just one click of a button take it all out for you. That's actually kind of cool. I like it's oh, so just, bad because like I you set it up once appealing. and then you never have to set it up again, yeah. pretty much. That and then is... I think when they added like summoning, it also you can also fill up your familiar now and it brings your familiar whatever you had in it as well as the preset. But we don't obviously have summoning. But yeah, it'll do really anything. Okay, that honestly sounds pretty nice. Um, 
Now it's I like, can't. it's like nowadays I'd probably call it a quality of life, and though it is like definitely an improvement, but at the same time, it seems kind of unique that like imagine people finishing Theater of Blood as like a team, and in three seconds they hit the bank and they're right back in. <sighs> that that was, sounds pretty sweet. That is, that is, that really that is sounds like a badass group of PVMers, dude. <laughs> it really does. Uh, it'd probably make people not like keep taking friggin' 10 minute breaks every top run either. Yeah. Uh, I could see that with PKing being a benefit. You know, people just. Yeah, I, I always thought the benefit would definitely be for PKers, especially because, like, yeah, I mean, it, it's already pretty quick for them, anyways, but because they just normally bring like extra food. But like, if you die as a PK, you have to reset everything. So it'd be nice for that for sure. Yeah, it really and, uh, is tough. I, I want to like almost gauge how the community feels about that because. I mean, yeah, we could keep the old school feel of just clicking back and forth a bajillion times every single time. I think, I think when they added the Worththrall X option, that already kind of defeated like it being a huge boost. Because yeah, Worththrall X is yeah. just, there's, I mean, that killed like mouse keys and AHK or whatever at the bank as well. Like you don't even need those anymore. Yep. But at that point, it's pretty much a preset. You just click twice instead of once pretty much. So it's really not that much different. <sighs> so I've, I think back in, the day, back in the day, obviously, like in 2016, 17, probably too big of an update but we're so advanced now in the game that i don't think that'd be frowned upon too much these days yeah so how would presets be introduced is it just completely free everybody gets it immediately done or is it like a bank like you got to pay a Locking banker point? a little bit or something well you'd be a benefit then probably uh maybe a certain amount of bank slots you've unlocked you unlock more presets Ooh, okay you like that idea, don't you? I love that idea. <laughs> that sounds great. I mean, that, that does sound like a pretty good way to like money sink as well on top of it. Yeah. I, I always like uh, if there really is massive quality of life. I don't want to like fully gatekeep it. Like, for example, uh, Jagex was trying to gatekeep the uh, like NPC contact by like shortening it down every like a few the dumbest ticks. idea ever. <laughs> so stupid. Literally, it's a bug, bro. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> You, you guys are not thinking straight with see, this one, bro. See, that was dumb. But uh, when it comes to like true quality of life, like banks, bank slots and stuff, like, dude, you just just pile on some GP sync for it. Like, we're all that. We're all super rich anyway. Just like, well, not all of us, but I mean, I would imagine the presets you'd come with like one or two for free, and then the rest you would unlock with GP. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. That would be cool. I'm yeah, down. So those, I, those, I, I am down, yeah. I think. I, I want to hear some downsides. I don't want to just be like fully like, yes, but I'm pretty sure there's the only downside is just like downside is clicks, maybe like a clicks. very quick, <laughs> a very quick like farm run or something. You could do like one click. You have all your saplings ready to go. But oh, that would be like, so nice. Though. You, you do that like once or twice a day. So <laughs> that would actually make me do farming. I'm not even going to lie. Like the actual sapling shit, probably. <laughs> like if, if I could just like one click works ready for a like a any any run like an herb run or a tree run or anything like that i mean it would work for clue scrolls too then like clue scrolls it'd, it'd take you two seconds to see, get ready for the see, next one that, that's like the one thing it's not even holding me back I'm, I'm still down for presets but it's like dude i have mastered my my clicks and my layout yeah for you clues. get yeah that, that that's always been the thing against like presets is banking quickly is a skill like yeah, a part yeah, of a skill yeah. i guess it, it, I mean, it's not really a skill but i, I mean know. Especially with how we can set our banks these days with presets already kind of there. Mm -hmm. But there is a bit of like mastering it, I guess. So I think that's a weird like gatekeeping type of thing. It, of it is. Though, gate, it is. It's a hundred percent gatekeeping. Look how quickly I took these items out of my bank, bro. <laughs> it, it's it's just like the fact that somebody has put in the time to make a perfect layout yeah, yeah. and they're like ready to go and they're reaping yeah. the benefits. Now it's just like, oh, everyone gets the benefits. It's like one. Yeah, I, I can definitely appreciate how fast people do it, but it's like. No, you're eh, right. Presets, whatever. presets sound amazing. Honestly, I think it's time. It's yeah, that'd time. be probably my. That would. It feels like a huge quality of life update almost. Yeah. Just thinking about how fun banking would be. <laughs> <laughs> just go in and click one. Oh man, that that would truly. That like that is where we're getting to the end of old school or like whatever like we thought kept old school old school like we have presets. To be, now. to be fair, most people I think just didn't want EOC in the game. That's true. When you really think about like the updates that this game has, it's not that it's like becoming R three. It's just literally EOC was the only thing that ruined it. And yeah. I, I mean, I would say microtransactions for me, obviously. But uh, you know, on top of that, EOC just completely changed everything. I don't like. I don't think adding a preset would change if people quit the game or not. It wouldn't. It's not like a quittable thing. Definitely not. What is your hottest take? Like, what is something that you want that's arguably really busted for this game, similar to, like, presets and things that you would absolutely love? Is there something that, like, takes the cake of just, like... Uh, if they this. added, like, effigies or something, probably. Whatever those. 
Oh, you can't, you gotta know what RPGs are. I don't. Uh, you've probably seen it before. It's like a white looking thing in the inventory. Um, an effigy was something that you got passively while either killing bosses or doing Slayer, pretty much. Well, you could do anything. It, it, the drop rate was from anything, but the higher the combat, it's like brimstone keys kind of. I think with the higher the combat, the higher chance. Ooh, and what? But do it's dropped from anything, not just a Slayer task. And um, what 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 do they do? Uh, so it had like four stages to it, I think, and the ending stage had like a lamp that you could use on any skill you want based off your level. You get the XP drop. So you would, uh, if you, you'd get one like every maybe like hour of doing Slayer or something. And on average, it would give you, so the first stage would let you pick between two skills. They're always the same set of two skills. So it's like fire making or wood cutting. So you'd pick wood cutting for the efficiency. Hmm. And it'd give you 15,000 wood cutting XP. But the next stage would give you like 20k and like smithing or mining. So you'd pick mining. And then the next stage would be 25k. And you pick like fishing or cooking. And then the last one's 30k, I think. And you pick like agility or something, and then you get a lamp once you do all that. So it, 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 you, I pretty much got like one to one ratio with Slayer and Runecrafting because I would use all the XP <laughs> on Runecrafting back in the day. So if you do like a million Slayer, you'd get a million Runecrafting. <laughs> very, very broken. What? So what's the like? Is there any? down i mean obviously there's downsides is there any like cost to the player or is it just like everybody gets these effigies at all times? everyone gets no, it just... yeah it's huh. just a, a new drop that, that you get so strange and you get it from pvming too so like pvmers would honestly pvmers might like it because they would probably almost max through just effigies <laughs> it, would, it would take a long time but yeah you'd, holy you'd, shit. it'd almost be like getting clue scrolls when you pvm it, it'd like replace a clue scroll type, type of thing so every time you get like an elite clue from pvm that could have been like an effigy kind of thing yeah. Okay. I'm against that idea, but I, 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 well, I don't actually yeah. want it. I just think that's oh, like okay. the most overpowered like, thing. Okay. <laughs> okay. So yeah, no, I, don't, I don't actually want that. No, I was just saying that was like the craziest idea okay, that, that we've probably seen. That's fair. So is there anything that's kind of like that you would want to see that's maybe like a hot take or is that? Oh, okay. We're, we're I, I thought we were doing a hot take for what wouldn't be good. Okay. A uh, hot take for what uh, would be good. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, to be honest, things like random little okay first of all the xp was like a bit too high for osr standards i think but they could um, nerf it for sure if they yeah, were like to ever consider i really do think i, I do cool i do like little, nice little like small drops that just adds yeah. to like something yeah for sure it's like a random event but actually useful like you're actually happy to see it it's like that, yeah that's yeah. kind of cool it that, i think that's what actually made slayer enjoyable it's every time like no joke every time you got an effigy you get a little bit of excitement while you're doing slayer. yeah 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 a little bit of like oh shit well, it's almost probably like clue scrolls for you but then again clue scrolls yes. feel like a freaking chore to do <laughs> see, fucking, this thing you just open it up <laughs> yeah see now that would actually okay imagine this imagine like a wood or not wood um uh, like a like a clue hunters guild that would ever come out i don't know if they would ever like do something about like a clue guild and down there's like a dungeon and like you kill these like new special monsters or whatever and like some of them just have the chance of just straight up dropping like an elite casket or like a hard casket or like oh like that, that. okay just, just Again, this is just coming out. A of very me. small chance. I'd be cool. Yeah, with that. just just something where you see it. It's like a little bit of dopamine. You're like, God damn! Like we just got a full cast. I didn't even have to do a clue scroll. Like let's go. You know, you get all that dopamine just from nothing. Yeah, I, I don't mind cool. dopamine drops like that. I mean, I kind of get that even at like like on like abyssal demons when you kill them for slayer. I mean, you probably don't, but if you do them for like praetor XP, you get like a whip. It's kind of like a nice drop just to yeah, have. Yeah, even though yeah. I'm an, even though I'm an Iron Man, it doesn't really make a difference. But it looks nice in the bank. Yeah. No, I. uh so it'd be kind of like that with an actual benefit to my account as opposed to just like an item. Yeah. And for me, I love Konar Slayer. Getting those keys just makes the whole grind feel a lot better. Uh, so I understand the idea of like effigies and things like that. Just, I don't know. Yeah. That it gets... Like if you don't get any brimstones in one task, you get kind of annoyed. Oh yeah. It's horrible. So that's how like effigies would pretty much be. If you get, I mean, you might do like two tasks and get one normally back in the day, but yeah, it's pretty common. That's kind of cool. Okay. Uh, I, I've always thought it would be cool for like boring skills to have some sort of more common occurrences. I mean, you see uh, wood cutting. Just if if anybody normally wood cuts, you all you do is just get a, a few nests here and there. There's nothing like crazy that ever happens. Same with thing with mining. You just mine and you get a few gems. They're always shitty. Like it would hey, be sorry, really cool. You, uh, to have some... Sorry, are you against stackable clues or for? At this point, I am indifferent and actually leaning towards stackable as long as it's appropriate do you think as long as it's like not purchasable through like the implings 
Or do you not even mind if you could just spam implings and get like 10 clue scrolls? The, the problem is, is like, I just know it's a slippery slope bringing in stackable clues, even though it's nice. And I think the vast majority of players would actually like really want it. And I wouldn't be against I think, it. I think it'll make more people do clue scrolls though. Yeah. It yeah, make yeah. it like a more active scene. It really just depends because like if it's a stackable where it literally just shows a number above the clue, I get a little worried. I kind of like the idea of like you can just have more clue scrolls, but you can't just indefinitely stack because they're individual items. So you could just have like four hard clues. Oh, yeah. You mean, you mean like uh, in the bank pretty much or in the inventory even? Yeah, yeah. Just sort of like, okay, like you can't just AFK this place and just all of a sudden have like 7,000 easy clues ready to go and you just do them immediately it's just like i kind of like the uh, idea so, more of just you can get more clue scrolls even if you have them but you don't want to stack up too many because they're not actually stackable they're just like a separate yeah yeah okay so you mean like you can still do like dagonos in the catacombs and get like three of them then go do them exactly that's what i'm okay. thinking is like a big they just wouldn't stack they'd just be an uh, item and uh on yeah. its own and I'm not a, I'm not fully against them stacking, but they really like ugh, again. I, I don't slope. think people would have been care if they stack or not like that. I think they just mean like having multiple clues. Not yeah. I don't know. It just sounds better if you just say stacking. It's but true. I think yeah. multiple clues is pretty much what people are getting at. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. So like if something like that happened with like skilling, I think you had like an idea a long time ago, right? Where skilling has like more clue scrolls or something. Yeah, I've always been wanting that. But that's always. what I was getting at. Like, if they ever did that, you definitely want to have stackable clues then. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've even thought of, like, really crappy methods. Like, this is this was my main idea of, like, there's always the meta. There's always, like, okay, this is how you fish. You two-tick fish. Or this is how you would cut. You 1.5-tick or two-tick your trees or something. But, like, there's always, like... So less just, efficient gives you more clues? Exactly, yeah. That, okay, so I, I made like a ramble a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Not long time ago, probably a few months ago. And I said, you might even disagree with this, because I think you were for Sepulchre having clue scrolls, right? Yes, absolutely. I told them they should have added it to Apatol. See? I'm, if there was like a way to do something yep. like that. I, do you think that'd be, that'd be more like ideal? Because it's less efficient and you don't get rewarded much there at all? See, my thing was I wanted uh like the new ring of endurance i wanted that to be given from older courses i wanted it to be a rare chance from all older courses so like obviously you'd go to apatol most likely or dorgashen yeah, or whatever work. something where it's like okay you do these classic courses because they're complete dead content now there's absolutely zero reason to do it but now there's a new unique that you could get just from doing it so now people are engaging with old content and getting a do you think unique. it would be like a random type of thing that you would achieve or do you think it's something kind of like you collect grace as you go and you trade those graces in for the ring. I kind of like both. I always like those ideas of like you are stacking. So if you do get hella unlucky, you just have like this token to just redeem it. But you also have a rare chance of just getting it exclusively. Just like, boom, you got it. You're done. Yeah, I see. Yeah, because I think I talked about like a ramble a long time ago. Where I was like, I think they made a mistake adding clue scrolls to Sepulchre because Sepulchre is already the best method for agility. Mm -hmm. And it gives you money on top of it. It's literally profitable. Yeah, Sepulchre. So adding clues on top of it just seemed like how much are we going to add to Sepulchre when like other <laughs> other courses could have had. Because Apatol gives you no marks of grace, so you're already shooting yourself in the foot there. No profit at all. Yep. And you make no profit in general. So the yeah. best place to add clue scrolls would have been that course, in my opinion. Yeah. No, you're. I completely agree with that. I, the only thing I don't agree with was me actually doing a bunch of sepulcher and then realizing oh this is actually incredibly fun and i would absolutely hate to like have to just <laughs> go back to like a really shitty course like i, I actually hate doing like a, other courses now besides sepulcher of course if i'm just being afk Artie's totally fine but yeah uh, Artie's always the most chill course yeah me. yeah yeah for sure but like if i was just obligated now like oh i gotta do this like absolute dog shit like sometimes i kind of like the best most fun engaging pieces of content to like be given most of the stuff even though like <laughs> no that makes sense it's supposed to that's like a yeah. good design but the limit but is totally like how much right. are you gonna do like how op can it be possibly right exactly when it first came out i had a bunch of rambles talking about how op sepulcher was literally best in every possible sense yeah i mean it, it made agility go from like 60k or 65 to like 100 what 100 pretty much <laughs> yeah for, and then that, that, is, that is the biggest per, that's the biggest percentage jump we've probably ever seen in a skill oh yeah by far 
Randalicious look, was very yeah. vocal about it too. I remember his. I words. remember that. That's good. that's most people probably roasted him because he wanted to AFK already and yeah. <laughs> feel like he was getting <laughs> yeah. efficient rates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I understand that. No, no, but it still did make. Well, because this is how Jagex proposed it. They said we're going to come out with Sepulcher and it's going to be 80k XP an hour with no rewards. But yeah, yeah. if you want the rewards, it'll be more like 60k. And that okay. sounded so they, absolutely fine. And then all of a sudden, yeah, that's it was right. They, they messed up the rewards. ratings. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it was. I remember that then, yeah. Because yep. the, I think he was complaining that they pulled it as so and it's way more overpowered than it's supposed to be. So they they technically should have nerfed it a bit. But yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. that was one of those situations they were just like, whatever, we don't really care. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or they're like, yeah, like we just lied. Uh, maybe because, agility. Yeah, yeah, okay. We lied. <laughs> But yeah. to be honest, some of the time, you know, as 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 immoral as it is, you kind of gotta lie a bit to the community. The community is very stern on things. Obviously, we've loosened up over the years, but like, damn, if if we were truly to like listen to the sweatiest of sweats, this game would have gone nowhere. I mean, it would just be like this pure state. Yeah, it's, it's, it, you you kind of need to cater to like everyone when it comes to like updates. You can't just be asking like elitists only. Exactly. Because then you're only gonna have like a very small select few playing. Mm-hmm. So I like that we have, uh, though, TOA, it is very noob-friendly. How do you feel about that? So TOA, very, most accessible raid yet, most complete, or uh, at least on the way to most completions of any raid. I'm pretty sure maybe it's already passed. I can't, I can't be fully now, sure. When you, when you think accessible, do you think it's because it's solo? Because technically you can, like, leech TOB and, like, whip and void, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I assume accessible in terms of, like, you can just go by yourself and, like, pretty mid-tier gear, right? It's accessible because you can literally go into a zero invocation raid having no yeah, idea yeah. what you're doing and have unlimited wipes, basically. Like, you can just keep dying and keep going in. Yeah. So. Pretty much like entry mode top, but there's no reward for entry mode top. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And that is not the problem. So a lot of people were kind of gatekeeping noobs and saying, like, oh, no people doing, like, zero through 150 should ever get a chance at a unique. It's it's giving too many. First of all, I think their argument was a little flawed. They would try to paint the argument, like, you shouldn't be rewarded for doing low invocations. But then they're like, well, prices are now dropping because of that. And it's like, that is absolutely not the reason why prices I think in my, uh, at least, like, a ramble today, I think one discussion I had in there was the fang drop should have been as rare as a staff drop, probably. Yeah, and uh, they—that's the part where they messed up. And I and I also said that because they fucked up the drop rate, that's why the Fang got nerfed as well. Because I don't think the Fang would have been nerfed if it was as rare as a staff. Yeah, if it was considered a mega rare. Yeah, for sure. And if it actually was that rare, uh, I was. Yeah, I, a lot of people were saying like they should have switched the Fang with the Ward because the Ward right now is just twice as common as the Shadow, so it's like a two out of twenty-four. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The Fang's a 7 out of 24, which is kind of absurd. So, uh, yeah. I'm surprised they didn't, like, kind of do more research on, like, the Fang. Like, noticing that's going to replace, like, a lot of things and mm -hmm. just made it very common for some reason. Like, the Defender from TOB kind of makes sense because it's a very minimal buff. Exactly. But it, you, you would use it everywhere, but it's a minimal buff. Yeah. Whereas, like, the Fang is a pretty huge buff compared to, like, even a Rapier or whatever. Yeah, I think at so. this point, what they've done, I wasn't super happy about but at least i'm like content with it now i'm just like okay like fang got a little nerfed it makes a little bit more sense because it's not super crazy powerful but it still has its use obviously it's really good in toa it's good at like next and other places but yeah what do you think about um niche weapons getting replaced over time like obviously this replaced the fang or the uh, the lands temporarily yeah, it... That, that is the weird part about niche weapons, isn't it? Is that one day they're going to have to be replaced with something, probably. Yeah, I mean, I've always had the, like, quote-unquote philosophy of niche weapons and specialized weapons being charged. I'm really against... I, I have been since the beginning and am still against the Dragon Hunter Lance being completely free to use. I think it's, like, really stupid. Yeah, um, it is... Uh... I mean, do you mind the like uh, like the blade kind of like where you charge it and then it's unlimited? That you don't mind probably. I don't. Or you do mind that. I like okay. So my if I could just be a game dev and just like decide this game for myself and just like choose things that would make sense in my my mind. Again, my own opinion. This is not like what if this happened. Like just anyway. I feel like people are get angry at me when I try to like say my thing. Anyway, so anyway. It's okay. Let them get angry. Yeah. Um, the, 
I just lost my train of thought. Okay, uh, what were, what was the question again? Talking about uh, unchargeable things. Oh yeah, that was it. Things. Okay, I'm there losing it. Okay, so all charged we- First of all, I'm a huge fan of charged weapons. Absolutely love the idea of charged weaponry, and I'm really glad that the J mods actually brought that up in the last Q and A. They were talking about like there. Are, well, I think it was just Mod Aiza on there. He was talking about like charged weapons do have potential for benefit in this game but they have to do it in the right way and the wrong way to do it is how they've done it right now where every single charged weapon is different charges it's like okay this ivan's is 25 or uh what what is it? it's not i don't even think it is 2500 i think, I think yeah, it's like, 250 initially or something like fucking yeah. so like the inconsistency you mean yeah just make every charged weapon a hundred thousand boom so now there's no inconvenience of it it's simply a way to give a basically you have to pay to use this weapon in a sense but it's not like the convenience is the thing that's or the inconvenience you mean like you mean like money strictly to fix it or what so for example you could still have different items charging different things so like sanguine sd staff hundred thousand charges charge with blood runes the scythe i have my own idea on this first of all get rid of the fucking well outside of tob just get rid of it Make yeah, the vials it, are kind of a weird thing. Yeah, and get rid of it charging with vials in general. So make it just the scythe is now three blood runes per swing. Done. A hundred thousand charges. You can charge it wherever you want. Do you, do you think runes. it would be ever ideal to make it so you could charge a scythe unlimited with like a million blood runes, but then it's not tradable after? I mean, I don't really care that much, but I, re- I just find it weird because it's... At, at least when it comes to, uh, I don't know. I get bothered by like that kind of stuff mainly because like who's deciding the limit? I mean, yeah, obviously the the limit is very strange and yeah, because like people have been saying, oh, just charge it with a hundred thousand bloods and we're good. It's like what that like, dude. I I the literally spent them, like yeah. two point four million bloods in a year on my scythe and like that was it was I was just. Uh- the good part it. about something like that, though, could be that it's untradeable after. So, like, it removes it from the game. That is true. That is so true. So, that could be, like, a cool idea. Forever. Yeah. Like, it's just bound to the account, pretty much, unless a hacker gets an outfit or something. See, that's the other problem, is, like, uh, if it's truly <laughs> bound to the account, do you just bring it in the wilderness and you never lose it? Like, how does that work? Uh, it would like just there's... turn to GP, probably. Like, 10k. Okay. It'd probably just be lost like that, yeah, for sure. Interesting. Yeah, it's it's tough. I would rather it just never have things like that. Now, I like charged weapons. I hate degradable stuff. I am I hate charging or repairing Barrows items. I hate it when things break. I I, uh, I like the idea. Of I, I had like an idea on Barrows like a long time ago. I I, mm-hmm. I think I might have even tweeted it at Ash or something, but it was like probably five, ten years ago. Yeah, maybe not ten years ago, like five. I think I said, is there any way that we can overcharge barrels so it's like 200% fixed so we could use it longer? Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty much like what I was getting at was just like, let us use it for longer and like let us like overpay so it can last a bit longer. Yeah. Like, again, I hate degradable stuff. So in a yeah, perfect I like world, it. I would just say barrels should all just be like permanent at this point. Like just who can, who? Like the, these days, cares? probably. It's yeah. not like it's. There's no like overpowerness from com- coming from it, so it's yeah. probably fine. Yeah, like at the, at this point, yes, just make it so Barrows doesn't have to be repaired anymore. Like seriously, it's time. It is like a nice sink, I guess, for like the freaking PKing though, because every time you PK someone, you gotta like, fix the Barrows gear. It's like how much that money sink true. there. That's that is pro- it was like two hundred k to fix sometimes. Well, it's fine to like keep Barrows the way it is, whatever. But like, don't set that as the precedent. Never do that again, in my opinion. Yeah, I don't like that. It's obviously it's a very old like way of doing it. So exactly. Charge weapons, absolutely fantastic. And the reason, the biggest reason why it's fantastic, I haven't even really shared the reason, is because you get options. The scythe, if the scythe was completely free, it's just like, okay, the scythe is just the best here, the best here. But if you set a price tag, with the with which uh, the J-Mods can do, they can set a price. Like, okay, this new weapon is extremely fucking powerful. It's extremely rare, extremely powerful. But we don't want it to just dominate in every single... Thing. so we're just gonna have an extremely high price tag to use it and that is like the beauty of it now you have options you can still use the shittier weapon if you're poor or you don't want to spend the the money or the blood runes or the whatever is charged from it i know they're coming out with a new uh blood letter bow it's gonna have like phantom essence or whatever you charge it with i love charged things just make it so it's not inconvenient make it a hundred thousand everything hundred thousand boom done 
like you mean the charges on the each item pretty much yeah everything should be a okay. hundred thousand uh right. like i thought you meant first originally like make like a hundred thousand of like whatever the item is the charge oh no, like no, no 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 just hundred thousand like blood runes and like vials <laughs> yeah just okay. make it so everything can be charged with a hundred thousand of its currency or whatever it is yeah yeah the charge amount mm -hmm. okay yeah i agree with that i don't see so what about like the trident because that one there's like an upgrade to it do you think this could be like an upgradable thing so with the trident, yeah, because somebody brought up that one uh, on my YouTube comments. That's fine. Like the original trident maybe could just be 10K and then the upgraded could be 100K. Yeah, 2.5 um, is so little, honestly. It, it should be is. like 5K it's just, minimum. It's just, it's pathetic. It just, There's nothing worse than people like running out during raids. Exactly. And you I can't do anything with it. Maybe like they should make it so it's way less powerful, but you can like use it for free. <laughs> it's yeah. just way less powerful. So <laughs> yeah. you could finish the raid or something. <laughs> yeah, they really should. Uh, and that's also kind of the beauty of like charged weapons, in my opinion. Like the scythe did it really well, where even if you do run out of charges, you could still use the scythe. It's not just like, yeah, oh, that's it's actually, actually pretty decent on charge in some places. Yeah, like it's yeah. not, it's not bad. Yeah, I mean, I know like you, like Iron Man get it sometimes, and they're so poor because they leech the freaking scythe. They can't afford any charges, but it's still better than like their D skimmy. And they're the ones saying, "Give us unlimited scythe for like 10k yeah. blood roots." <laughs> <laughs> they're like, oh, their only stack is 10k. Just, oh my god. Yeah. yeah. Now I, I like the idea of giving really overpowered weapons a charge. It gives more variety and balance to the game, and it's the same thing with specialized weapons. Arc Light did it pretty well. You have to charge it with. Ancient shards, dragon hunter lance. I don't like that you have to charge it with three. That one's kind of weird. Dark light. That one is weird to be honest. I don't, why isn't it just one? Just give us three, three free charges with it. Like I don't. Why is it three? And why not just make the arc light a hundred thousand charges and just yeah let us as just, well. And yeah, don't let it no like need. just click the shards on the thing a million times. Just say how many you want to do in it. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, that one is strange. Luckily, it's not that many because it's like it's only like a few extra clicks. But if we, if it was like a hundred thousand limit, yeah. then yeah, obviously we need to have the X off from it. <laughs> yeah. So just streamlining things like that would be really nice. Uh, and it gives variety in the future for weapons to be extremely powerful at a super high price, which it's like the blow. Think of the, how beautiful the blowpipe is in a way. And you can use dragon darts. You're just burning money, basically, but you get the best, you know, or you can use a yeah. lower version of it. I like that. Yeah, blowpipe is a pretty good design for like when it came out because it was such a long time ago. It feels like now, too, but pretty well good design. Yeah. Could you ask... Okay, so this topic's coming from Duan Yi. Could you ask what his favorite task along the way to 200 mil Slayer was? Do you want to take a guess? Smokey D's. Oh, I barely did those. Oh, really? Abby D's. I, well, before the ashes, no. <laughs> uh, you, you tell me. There's like only one task left to pick from. <laughs> I can't. The, uh, Necreals? The, the nec Necreals in Slayer okay, Tower. There, there we go, Necreals. Well, the Ash update made them a fucking crazy joke. Dude, Necreals are awesome in the Slayer Tower. I love them. You just, like, basically two-shot them with arc lights occasionally. It's just nice. Yeah, with, like, all that strength bonus, for sure. Oh, yeah. Then there's me with a whip and a proslite. <laughs> Wait, you don't use arc light? I did, but I believe, like, because the way it works with the strength bonus, like, you have to have pretty oh, high strength bonus. Oh, yeah, that's and true. I, I kind of wanted to use bracelets while doing Necreals. That's a good point. So, like, it would probably just make whip, like, just as good. So I just use whip normally. Yeah, those calcs get really wonky. Yeah, because ferocious gloves versus like the brace, it's a huge difference for arc light probably. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'll just camp whip at this point, like tent whip. Yeah, they're really squishy too. Like that's you can use anything against them. Yeah, they got no defense. Yeah. Yeah, I would say neck reels for sure. I think I killed just about two hundred thousand total. Maybe like twenty thirty k in the catacombs. The rest is in the Slayer Tower. Are you a fan of melee Slayer versus barrage? Well, I've, I've been doing Melee Slayer even when Barrage Slayer was a thing. Yeah. Uh, I didn't like Barrage because of like the alting part of it. I didn't really use mm -hmm. any alts. Mm -hmm. I think when I hit like 100 mil Slayer, I started alting Smoke Devils with my main for about maybe like 30 Smoke Devil tasks, I would say. And then they nerfed it, I think, which was, I was really happy with. I'm very happy they nerfed most alting methods, by the way, for Iron Man. I, I agree with that. I, I definitely don't know why it took them so long to nerf that. Yeah. It was yeah. like one of the main reasons most people started playing Iron Man. It was like no alts and like I know, I know. And, it, then, and then they're just like, nah, you can use alts everywhere. I'm so glad they put a stop to that because like I was getting a bunch of like hate because I was sort of on the forefront of advocating for it. I'm like, dude, we we got to get rid of alting yeah. everything. Like corp especially. It was like if you don't Did have you see two the corp rank alts, one guy. Sorry. Did you see the rank one hardcore guy at the corp? He died a while ago. 
he had like four thousand with ulting. Jesus, yeah, no, I mean, so like zero, like zero danger, hardcore, uh, hardcore Iron Man, like corp four thousand. Yeah, it's, or something. it's completely busted. I mean, yeah, I did it for like ten kills on stream just to show how busted it was, and I just didn't yeah. care after that. <laughs> I know it. It's completely busted, and uh, for for hardcores, it's completely safe as well. Like not completely safe, but pretty much completely safe. And yeah. it was also like three times as fast. If yeah, you, pretty much. I'm just like, dude, this is so against Iron Man, and people are just so angry because i was trying to get rid of their like sweaty methods and i'm like i, I wasn't angry at people doing it obviously i was just like this shouldn't know, be a I'm method just... that we can do exactly like, I, I don't blame me for abusing it but it shouldn't be a method that we can do exactly and for me i was just like dude if i can definitely see if this never goes uh like i don't know if this if this continue if this trend continues it's not even going to be iron man anymore it's just like well, yeah, it's going to be... You gotta have I, your I wanted to mostly get away from Altscape when I started, like, the Iron Man, because I was like, I don't really like this idea of just, like, everything just being Altscape, so I moved to Iron Man for sure for that. Okay. Uh, really, RLY asks, been a big fan since you started creating content. How did you get introduced into the game? What's the hardest you've gone in the game over an extended period? XP per hours a day played. How many 200 mils do you have? So there's a bunch of different questions there. I guess we'll start with um, how did it's you get 200 into 200 mils? I have yeah. no idea. I have, <laughs> okay, cool. I have two accounts in RS3 with like 200 mil all minus the new skill. Okay. And then we have the Iron Man, which probably has like 10 200 mils in RS3. And then we have Old School, which my main account has five. Jesus. And then the Hardcore has four or five. I lose track, bro. That's a, that's a lot. God damn. Okay. Something like that. Um, well, how did you get introduced into RuneScape in the first place? Lost that. Uh, I think it was 2005. There was a, we had like a soccer tournament when I used to play like soccer on like a rep league with like friends. Uh, after a tournament in the weekend, I think we went to my one dude's house uh, on the soccer team. Name was Nick. Him and his friend, like our like the whole like we're all teammates, obviously. So they were playing RuneScape on like a laptop, and didn't really know what the hell it was. They were just like chopping trees and stuff. And I, for some reason, thought that was cool. Fate <laughs> just like chop trees and burn the log <laughs> after. Uh, so I like made an account that that weekend. Uh, it was called uh, He She One O Nine. This is before transgender stuff. Like okay, so this is like cool back then. All right, this, yeah, it was yeah. just like He She. I don't know. Yeah, was, yeah, yeah. I think that was like a term we used to use. Yeah. As like a joke back then. Okay. <laughs> in like grade two, I guess, or grade four or five, I don't know. Um and then uh I never like I didn't have like I never had a computer or internet until way later in my life. So mm -hmm. I didn't really get to play RuneScape until like probably two thousand seven or something when I bought a I bought a laptop. I worked over the summertime. And I bought a laptop in like grade seven or something. And I started playing RuneScape on that for sure. Oh god. Um but yeah, I think that's uh, that's pretty much when I started. And then I remember like calling them up, being like, "Hey, can you uh, bank my logs for me?" Because I didn't know how to find a bank. I was very confused, like where <laughs> things are on the map. It was very confusing. So, yeah, the the freaking pop up like map thing is huge for Rune that Runelight has, honestly. Yeah. That is probably very like noob friendly for new oh, players. Oh yeah. When you like, did you have these? You, you had to go to the website before. Yeah, you had to Google map. Runescape map. Very like, horrible yourself. design for yeah. that. This what Runelight did a very good job, or I guess. Old school buddy kind of did it first, and I don't really know, but yeah, uh, yeah, that's a very smart design for especially noobs. Um, yeah, and then the other one was uh, most time I played, I think. Yeah, so like, how what's the uh, long or um, what's the hardest you went? Like, at what time period was the hardest you were gaming? Would you say the last like three months of finishing 5.2 bill on RS3? I think I think I started playing like 18 hours a day, and I I remember during that time, this is back when I used to go like pretty consistently to the gym at that point. Mm -hmm. And I remember like slowly, I just started going twice a week and just once a week. And during that one workout, I was like, this is fucking horrible. I'd rather just play RuneScape right now. So I think <laughs> it became like almost zero times a week I'd be going to the gym for about two months, I'd say in a row. Cause I, I, like, I still went like once maybe. Yeah. But the workout wasn't good because my mindset was still thinking about RuneScape because I was trying to finish the 200 mil goal. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, just very like, once I'm done this, I'll 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 have a life, and that never happened. Yeah. <laughs> so that was that was probably the hardest I went. Um, in terms of my hardcore, 
Uh, I think I'm my, my hardcore probably average is like 10 to 12 hours, I think, which is very much. But for like, I guess, a content creator, it's pretty average. Yeah. So I mean, it's probably it's probably not average, probably a little bit above average. But yeah, it's a lot. I need to ask just on that time period of you playing like 18 hours a day. Do you I, I had this question brought up on like a previous cast of like, do you miss the addiction for itself? Like, do you miss being that addicted? Oh, hell no. I don't know who misses playing that much. It's not fun to play that much, honestly. I don't know. The game kind of loses its like taste once you like make yourself do it as like a chore almost. That's true. That there there is I don't know. I guess it depends on how you're playing it, but like when hardcore mode first came out, that was the most I was ever addicted to this game. And like the first three days of hardcore, I played like twenty one hours each day. I've like um, never gone that hard. It's not I I need I need sleep. Yeah, I mean, that I was for the first three hard. days. Of course, I, like, crashed after that and, like, kind of, like, reset back to normal. But I, all I thought about was the game. I just loved it. I wanted to keep playing it. All I, th- I didn't care about any other hobbies in life at the time. And I kind of, I don't know, I kind of missed that, like, real obsession. Obviously, it's not healthy, and there's a lot of, like, neglect that goes on in your life, but... I think you could still have that when like a new update comes out and like, you like love it or something, but just to continue doing it consistently is very like oh yeah not fun. for months on end. That's a completely different story. That, like you're yeah, I don't mind no life thing for like a few days. That's like kind of cool sometimes if you're trying to do like you're trying to reach a certain goal in a certain amount of days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But once you like continue to do it every day and you just oh then it's not even fun. Yeah. It's just like you doing it out of like. Just yeah, I meant more for like consistency stuff that it really is too much sometimes. Because then you like don't even want to leave the house and then it just gets worse. Horrible. So I would, I would say I don't miss that at all, probably. Yeah, that, that's fair. That's a fair take. It's also. I, th- I think when, oh, right, when, uh, when, when Group got released, I guess I played a lot actually. Hmm. I was not yet back in the gym. I started going again like six months ago, I think. So during Group, I didn't go to the gym at all. So that was, uh, that was horrible. So there actually was uh, here. Let me like try to find that. There was a question talking about um. Oh, here it is. UFC fighter asks, "Will you ever post gym vlogs like you used to?" Um, no, I don't think so. They're just like kind of awkward to record, especially like when you normally go to that gym every day. It's like, yeah. hey like guys, it's like me with the camera. Yeah. Now, now if I was like if I was like a Chris Bumstead, I don't know if you know who that is. Yeah, he's like. Uh, classic physique champion like three or four times. Okay, just actually Canadian. Yeah. He like he he gets like almost a million views a video. Jeez. So if it was my job to that extent, I don't think I'd be embarrassed to have a camera with me. Yeah. But also, most people would know who I am at that point. Like That's most true. people at the gym know who Chris Bumstead is if they go to the gym. Mm-hmm. Um, at least for the most part. If you don't know who he is, you'll probably find out once you see how big he is. Um, but no, I, I just I can't. It just feels weird because like, I see these people like every day almost, and then all of a sudden I have a camera on me, and it's just like, who's this guy? <laughs> so I can't. Yeah, it just feels weird. Yeah, if it, if I had like a home gym, definitely, I think I would do it. Oh, that'd be so sick! Yeah, like an I think actual a home gym, I would then do it. Home gyms are like genuinely goals. Like that, it's just like an actual good gym. That would be so nice. I I like the idea of it, but at the same time, I kind of like the atmosphere of the gym. Really. Maybe from like a competitive standpoint, but there's always like somebody, you know, across from you working pretty hard. You want to work just as hard, if not harder. That's fair. And okay. just keep going. And I think like you make sure you rest less than them. You make sure you're doing more weight than them. Maybe it's an ego thing, but at the same time, it keeps you going. You make sure you grunt a little like bit. Like if that guy picks up the weight too soon, I'm like, okay, I got to go to them. I can't like sit there and just be like, <laughs> all right, he wins. You play these mind games when you work out, dude. <laughs> yeah. I guess for me, it's like, it must just be the social anxiety of going to like a packed gym. Just sounds like, ugh, I don't want to do. De- there, I, I remember going to this like one gym in Oregon, and I've only had a few gym memberships. It was fine in college when you basically just get a free gym membership, but like other than that, dude, the gyms are just so packed. You have to wait in line for things. I'm like, this is stupid. This is absolutely stupid. So yeah, if you go like peak hours, good. for sure that that happens. If you go anywhere from like four to like six or seven, pretty damn packed. If you go anywhere after like seven or eight, definitely not too bad. That's true. Yeah, but yeah, there's nothing worse than wanting to like like sometimes I get to the gym and fucking like for whatever reason my gym doesn't have that many benches. Even though it's a very like big expensive gym, mm-hmm. they don't have that many like available benches, like free weight benches. So I have to like sometimes wait or just go do machines. And there's nothing worse than like me doing machines at the start of my workout. I don't. I want to do free weights normally at the yeah. start. So uh, just having to wait for a bench, I just end up like kind of doing. They just like dick around sometimes. You just like do like a little bit, yeah. 
because yeah. I don't want to use any of my energy yet until it's like free weight time because that's just that's normally how I want to start my workout. So yeah, the, that, that could sometimes waste time. The other thing that bothered me so much is even when you are done waiting in line, then you feel stressed out because other people are waiting in line for you. And so you're like rushing yourself. I always do that. I, that I so do if that. someone like stands behind me and I'm working, I'm like, God damn it. All right, I got two left, buddy. <laughs> I know. I, I, I had like 20 minutes left, bro, but I'm, I got two left now. I know. <laughs> I it's horrible. <laughs> But I feel bad. They're just sitting there waiting, like all sad. I'm like, all right, this asshole, bro. <laughs> all sad. <laughs> hey, tip to everyone: don't do that. Just go find something else to do, bro. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't let, like let, like, trust me, that guy is leaving because he has to, not because he wants. He's not done, bro. <laughs> He's not done his workout. He's just waiting on you. Fucking, I hate when people do that. I make sure I never do that because I I know exactly like what they're thinking. Okay. Hugh Jass asks, "What made you call yourself number one?" bass or boss or and i also want to know like where did where did alkin come from is alkin your name it's alkin My actual name that is your yeah. al actual name yeah from from birth yeah <laughs> damn that's sick. that's a cool name i've never even heard of that it's, like, uh, it's a turkish name i think i think it means red blood in english i don't know why that would be my name but i think it was probably just like other family members that had the name so they just gave it to me that's really cool i like that name a lot yeah um Fuck, what was the other question? What what wait what made you call yourself oh, the name, number the one name. bass or number one boss? All that stuff. So I think when I was I think when I was like members, this is like probably one of my first members accounts. Mm -hmm. I remember going to Lesser Demons and the Karemjoy place and like the free to play area. But I was on a members world. I had a slayer task there, I think. I remember seeing somebody there called Rod for Boss. So it was R O D with the number four in it and then boss. And mm -hmm. I just thought it was really cool this guy had the name boss in his name. And then I just tried to figure out a name for like my new account that I made later on, which is like now my main account on like both games, just Alkin. Uh, and I just called it number one boss because I just I needed to have the boss in there yeah. no matter what because I just I thought it was a sweet like name. I was like probably like I was probably grade seven or eight probably around then. So that's when I made that account probably. And then that's number where one bass. Where did that come from? Just that was just me mocking my own name. Nice. Yeah, it's just like, and I was like, I want to be like Alkin, so I just said no on base. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, Pitbull, hardest and easiest grind with the biggest upgrades. Uh, wait, can we? Wait, what? The biggest what? I'm, I'm confused. Let me, wait, let me read this. Hardest and easiest grind with the biggest upgrades can be spoon, dry, KCs, and changed. At... I'm fucking losing it. I don't understand this uh completely. Do you have wait type type of disc? I could probably see it. Just like yeah, high paste I'll, it. I'll, I'll link it to you. I'm assuming what he means is the driest I've gone on something and how hard the grind was, maybe. There it is. Hold on, let me click. Hardest and easiest grind with the biggest upgrades. So maybe like armor upgrades for like an Iron Man. I guess so. Okay, hardest grinds. Well, I haven't done the Inferno yet, so I'd probably be like the harder one. <laughs> um. I didn't like going for scythe because it just it felt so useless using a, a freaking non scythe at TOB. Yeah. I didn't get. I got my first tob weapon at like 500 KC. I think it was a Sang staff. I got my first uh, tob weapon at 915. Yeah, I think I remember seeing that tweet like a long time ago. I was like, <laughs> it's okay, maybe horrible. maybe it's not that bad for me then. <laughs> yeah, then you get some people with like all weapons and like 300. I'm like, what the fuck I, is every, this? Every every single hardcore like that ever did it initially. Sick nerd mutts. Yeah. Um, I think Roydy was the first guy that actually went I, I like, think like I th dry. I think like maybe like 10 years ago, I was so annoyed by drop rates. I genuinely thought that drop rate should just be guaranteed drop when you hit the drop rate. <laughs> I was like, fuck all these people getting lucky, bro. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> wait, wait, so like nah, everybody bro, just, like, everybody, like you couldn't you get, get the earlier? drop when you get the KC that's earned for it. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. This is back when like, I was like, uh, probably like in grade 10, like okay. in high school. I probably had like this. I was just probably annoyed that people just salty could go and get like an Elijah Spirit Shield on like RS3 <laughs> and just have all the money they need after that. And I'm like, this is bullshit. What do you? So I was like, you, you should have to like earn your fucking drop. <laughs> what, what What are your thoughts on? I think RS3 might do it, where like you get a better increased rate after drop rate. Is that how they do it? The pet grind, yeah. Oh, it's is that called? Just for pets? Um, yeah, it's just for pets. It's oh. called uh, thresholds. Mm. So, um, if Bandos boss is one in five k. When you hit a thousand KC, it becomes two and five K. So it's pretty much one in twenty five hundred now. Okay. So after you get a thousand Bandos boss KC, 
it, it pretty much just makes it so very long term you can't go extremely dry. Like you like you know how um that one guy's name that went like twenty K mole KC dry? Yeah. You, that could like probably never happen on that game because the prestige would end up being like your chance of getting mole pets like one in like a hundred at that Casey. Mm -hmm. And technically, if you don't ever claim the pet, you could just spam drop the pet actually. <laughs> like if you get such a high KC, you can just almost always guarantee the drop. But that'd be like a very high KC, I think. Interesting. So yeah, I, I wasn't really, a, when, when pets first came out for old school, I kind of thought they should have done it that way. Mm-hmm. Um, cause it just kind of, it just gives you a bit more of a feeling that like you're actually kind of closer to your goal. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's no like, oh, I'm the same as I was the first Casey. Yeah. Um, it, it obviously wouldn't work these days cause people have already grinded pets like crazy, but, yeah. um, I like that design more, I think, cause then you can't go extremely fucking dry. Yeah. Uh, at the I, same time, I guess it's part of RuneScape, isn't it? It's hard to say. Like, yeah, you, de you definitely... It makes sense, and if we didn't already have a system we had, I bet more people would be open to it, but, like, because we do play with just absurd dry streaks that can just yeah. happen. The thing that's... It really, yeah. It's not much of, like, an upgrade. Like, 1 in 2.5k at Bando's boss after a 1,000 kills that you've already done, that's not, like, that big of a boost, but obviously it is a boost. Yeah, the thing that scares me is, like, do you remember that Discord bot that you could just, like, say, like, plus kill corp? Yeah, yeah, thirty thousand or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I've done a few of those where it's like plus complete corp, and like I yeah. seriously had a few times where I wouldn't get an Ellie until like forty four k. That's yeah, like, that's like just like awful. 10 eleven x rate. I'm like, bro, like obviously this is extremely rare to happen, but it could happen. Yeah, and like yeah, the fact with, that with that threshold exist, thing, that oh. pretty much can't really happen. Yeah, yeah, that would be. Uh, that's what it prevents from happening, pretty much. Yeah. So with like big grinds like that, if you really are a completionist, I mean, not like I'm like advocating for it, but I, I definitely, I think it's reasonable. I don't think it'll ever come into old school, but like, I'm not like, oh, that's a stupid idea. I think it's just normal. Yeah. I think I, I thought it was originally crazy when like old school released pets with no thresholds. I was like, holy fuck, it's going to take forever. Yeah. Because they're they not do really take guaranteed. Forever. Yeah, they do. But I was like, I was shocked because I was so used to the threshold method on my old on our RS3. So it was, it was surprising seeing like, wow, people are actually gonna grind five thousand with no like extra reasoning like, that they're gonna get it soon. Yeah. It's now crazy. I will say selfishly as a content creator, I kind of like the old school drop system because some of the time your channel like blows up because of insane drop. Uh, going dry. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's normal. Yeah. So. Yeah. I spooned like most of my pets on my Iron Man for sure. I think like only two of them I went and dry on when I was hunting them, which is like the mole pet, which is nothing. <laughs> and then um, I don't have like KQ yet, yeah, I'm like 4,800, I think, and KBD, I'm like 3,500. But those are like all easy bosses, yeah, so I'm not, I'm not worried about those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I've only gone dry on like maybe three pets total so far out of like 29. Really? So we're both fucking spoon then? Well, I think everybody ends up being spoon, unless you were to specifically go for a pet before you. Yeah, because you'll like go dry on like a few of them for sure. Exactly. Yeah. The first like. 20 you're almost inevitably gonna get them early most people do only because the first like five you got by accident probably yeah exactly yeah you just do a bunch of bosses in general and eventually you're gonna get lucky on some yeah that or like skilling pets mm -hmm. okay uh this you know what well i, I want to hear your take on this how do you not burn out from playing this is coming from bear uh so the obvious thing is like it is the job obviously i guess yeah. so that might that might be like a good reasoning but then again i was pretty addicted way before like i made any money from streaming or youtube obviously so i think it's obviously just an addiction problem let's say that <laughs> um i think i just have too many goals and maybe playing multiple accounts keeps you kind of motivated to that like aspect because you just always have new goals and things to work on and like if you AFK an account to a point where it becomes like, because obviously like when you make an account, the first like few months, it's just like the really boring grindy part of like an Iron Man, for example. So if you kind of just AFK past that part and then you look at the account and all of a sudden it has like decent stats, you want to start playing it. Mm -hmm. So I think something like that probably helps a bit. Um, but definitely playing multiple accounts, probably less likely to burn out because you can just always do something else. Interesting. I see. I've always been more of a solo type player, but I wonder if I would enjoy multi logging a bit more nowadays. 
I mean, your Iron Man, you could pretty much go AFK anything you want on it. So you could have like unlimited blood shards. You could have yep. unlimited amethyst. Yep. You could have unlimited like anything. You could do collection log AFKs. The problem is like, I I worry about like how much motivation I'd have on the active account. So if I were to make a new account, or I even have an old hardcore that's like eighteen hundred total with Dragon Warhammer and stuff like. Yeah, you would just have to. Well, if you ever have motivation to play it, that's when you'd probably just take advantage of that. Yeah. And then if you lose interest, that account can go AFK and you can log back onto your Ironman that has like 100 blood shards now. Yeah, like Fuse. Fuse. That dude literally camped blood shards for like a year. What the shit? Yeah, I don't think I would have camped them for that long because there's so many other things that you could have done as well. But <laughs> but yeah. that like, is I like, saw... like you literally can just camp, perma camp those like forever blood shards. Like that's yeah, nice. with, the, with the scythe debatable. Scythe is fucking stupid. That's blood true. Shards. That's true. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like I, I kind of recently started AFKing the Iron Man like a little bit. So I made myself a hundred thousand cannonballs while doing that. I mined myself, or I, uh, I got myself about fifty k amethyst arrows and darts now, because I wasn't really in the mood to play at the moment. So I just did that, and I don't know. Eventually, you just get motivation for playing it again, and it has like all these supplies. Okay. I, I definitely think Iron Man is also the reason why, because. I think gathering supplies as an Iron Man is just very unique as opposed to a main account. Yeah. So yeah. I think that aspect is nice. Like, I would never AFK cannonballs on a main. I would just log out. There's no point. Yeah. I would just, like, just buy a bond and buy the freaking cannonballs with it. <laughs> Dude, I'm AFKing cannonballs right now. That is great. Yeah, that's what I was doing. That that thing kind of sucks. It makes it so much less AFK. I know. They did it in the worst <laughs> way, dude. I'm so bothered. They did it the way it. nobody wanted to do it, bro. It's so it's dumb. You wanted it to be more AFK and just quicker. <laughs> I know. I'm st- I, I, I wish they did it the other way, bro. Just just make it uh let us let us like store friggin' steel bars in there or something and just use it as we go. Yeah, I I just think the whole thing was a little I don't I don't know. Yeah, they really did it in the worst way. It's just like it's fine, I guess. Especially for these Sebe casts. Obviously it's like twice as fast because I'm gonna be sitting at my computer anyway, just staring at my screen, but like damn AFK. If you, if you ask anyone sucks. like if you ask anyone if they would rather have it more AFK, they'd be like, Yeah, please. Yeah, so, that's the whole like, point. I know. N- nobody wants the way it currently is. But we do want it to be that quick. I thought they were originally gonna do cannonballs through blast furnace, which would have made more sense anyways. Because mm-hmm. like the speed would have been so much better. That'd but... be insane. Like that would that would be nice, man. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know. It's it... weird to like have cannonballs. To I, mean, I know it's like Iron Man kind yeah. of type of thing, but I mean, a good portion of the community does play Iron Man now, so it's it makes sense to have some updates cater towards it. Dude, I, what are your thoughts on Blast Furnace? Well, I mean, Giant's Foundry saved a lot of money with smithing. That's for sure. If you mean like the actual activity of Blast yeah, Furnace, yeah. Friggin' boring. I I actually genuinely enjoy Blast Furnace. I, I like making the bars because the stack looks nice after. Yeah, yeah. But the running back and forth, I don't know if I enjoy that. Dude, I I don't know what it is. I, and it's always after 99 I start enjoying it because you don't have to do any glove switches. You're just fucking camping. Oh, next yeah. Day, dude, the pre glove switch is awful, man. I, okay, I can't. That's, I that's hate that. Bad. I will I say, would, yeah. They that, would, there should, that, the, that place should have been a combination of those two things together the Giants Foundry. Dude, okay, like, what are your thoughts uh, on Giants Foundry? Because I think that place is incredibly boring. Obviously, it's OP, and you pretty much have so to do boring, it. Boring, but OP as hell, yeah. OP as fuck, but, like, dude, it is so boring and tedious it, it is and not boring. AFK. It, 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 it tricks you into thinking it's AFK, and then you fuck up your sword. <laughs> it's a horrible design, bro. Yeah, I, I, I wish it was... I do not. I do not like Giants Foundry. It's it was Again, it was fine for the first five hours, getting a few collection logs, and then I'm like... Oh my god, like this is the word. This is like hell. This is like MTA. If, if they made it so you like stop after you've reached like when you can't do it anymore, otherwise you damage it, it'd probably be more enjoyable because it'd be more chill probably to do. Mm-hmm. But having to make sure you don't overboard with your freaking sword can get like a little bit annoying, yeah. I, I don't even know if it can be. This is my own opinion. I hate Giant's Foundry. It's the worst. It is the worst. Uh, I think I might enjoy it just because of the fact how beneficial it is for my account. I don't know it's, if the actual activity I enjoy, obviously. Yeah, you're, you're totally right. It's incredibly beneficial. It's made 99 smithing like a super streamlined grind for Iron Man. It's, it's no longer like buy gold ore a million times. It, it almost feels like Mahogany Homes upgrade type of thing. Like in terms of um, like now you can get like level 80 so quickly and so cheap with like construction and smithing. Yeah, I'm talking about the activity itself. Mahogany Homes, 
great. I think I think they pretty much nailed it. I, I think they did as good as they could have done with their like. You think they're gonna have more skills control. like that with like contracts? I hope so, but I also hope the rewards. T- Again, uh, you know, I think you'll appreciate it. Most uh, people in my audience have heard this a million times, but damn, if you want to give rewards from, especially mahogany homes when construction is meant to be a gold sink skill to just let it shit out clue scrolls as the rewards you know what i mean like do a bunch of contracts get like some amy po- what's what's that what are the points carpenter points <laughs> i don't know what i'm trying to say uh oh, yeah, yeah. and just let us buy clue scrolls or something or like do something that isn't just shitting out gold for you as rewards like that's the perfect opportunity for it and that would be oh the, the rewards is like the loot crate is that what that, that is yeah yeah, yeah. The Does it give awful. you a lot or not much? No, it's horrible. It's like it gives you like five steel bars and like five normal planks and like hmm. a few I, nails. It'd be cool if they had like an expansion to like reward points. I think um that might kind of correlate a little bit to this RS3 thing. <laughs> I fucking hate comparing it to RS3, but what RS3 has like a like a mini games reward shop. Ooh. So you can you can buy like a Castle Wars plate body thing, whatever it is, mm-hmm. by doing like BA like. If you like, it was like a spotlight. So if you spend a certain amount of time in BA, you'll accumulate these points. It's like one point a minute if it's like the spotlight of the week. So while you're spending time there, you're collecting points on top of getting normal points for BA. Mm. And those points have like a reward shop. And the reward shop lets you imbue your rings, for example, mm-hmm. which would be pretty cool. It's like an expansion to Nightmare Zone. Yeah. Uh, it lets you buy full void. So you can actually do Castle Wars and get full void. It's much slower, but you can AFK Castle Wars and get full void from it. Uh, like that type of thing. Yeah. But it, it kind of correlates like the reward shop being reworked kind of thing. But that, I thought that was a pretty unique reward shop. Probably wouldn't work for old school, but it is kind of unique. Yeah. The one downside of Mahogany Homes is there is no rewards and they can't really, like there is rewards obviously, but there's no like actual worthwhile rewards where it's like. I think the reward for them was just that it makes construction cheaper. That's like the reward exactly. for it pretty much. Exactly. Yeah. There's, there's, there wasn't designed to be an actual reward, just the method was supposed to be helpful. It makes me sad though, because like they really could, I don't know, like loot crates as Fortnite ish as they are, they're so fun. Like stacking up like loot and actually like getting like rewarded for it. And again, it's going back to construction being a gold sink skill in and of itself. Like that's that's the purpose of it initially. And you can't really just start shitting out gold from these loot crates. But I, I kind of like the the ones from uh, Guardians of the Rift. They actually have a very high clue scroll drop rate. I, I don't like, know if you noticed that. I like Guardians of the Rift. It's, and... it's a one in five drop rate for a hard clue from those things. But they're kind of rare to get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But... Like I still like those because it's like it's almost like stackable clues in a in a sense. They, they are, yeah. I did them recently, and I was like, I just got like three hard clues in like like no time. Yeah, that's but fun. it took a long time to get it. Obviously, if it was a reward like that from like most like mini game related things like that, then that'd be kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't mind that. Okay, Ariadna, are you afraid your streaming career might take a hit if your main hardcore dies? No, not at all. Because I, I, I think most say. of what I stream is not my hardcore. Like yeah. all of last year, I streamed just my Iron Man. My hardcore was in the bottom corner mining Amethyst. So I don't think that's like a main attraction to my stream at all. Um, maybe. Have you had nightmares of your hardcore? Night? Like, do you, how much do you care about no. your uh, hardcore status on that account? No, I don't have nightmares at all. Okay, that's. I, that's I, nice. I, it's very rare I never have. It. I've maybe had like two dreams of it dying. Mm-hmm. The only dream I had of my hardcore dying was. Um, I think I happened maybe twice in the past. It's very similar to like what I actually did IRL like a long time ago. So when I was young, I died on RuneScape and I didn't, I thought if I restarted the computer, it wouldn't save. Oh. So like, I, I wouldn't actually have been dead. <laughs> so I thought, so I restarted my computer when I was really young, think I can log back in and not be dead. Oh. So I think in my dream, I almost had that type of thing happen with my hardcore, like as of recently, like, like a few years ago, not when I was much younger. So I think what happened was like I died, but then like, I logged out so nobody could see that I died and then it just didn't update the high scores and it just it never showed that I died or something. It's kind of like that. But no, I've I've only had maybe two dreams of my hardcore dying and yeah, I don't I don't really know how much I value the status. The, my main goal was to innermost slayer on the hardcore and now that it's done, I feel a bit more like I could do kind of things if I wanted to, but with the freaking recent stuff with Jax, I I don't trust anything. <laughs> I was playing yesterday and everything just disconnected. I was like, well, if I was PVMing, there it goes. 
Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. That, like they don't refund anything if it's on their end. That's yep. ridiculous it's to horrible, me. Horrible, horrible. They are just horrible for that, bro. Yeah. Worst customer service you could imagine, bro. Well, here's here's a nice little uh, follow up question. Actually, after uh, I'll read um, the other thing. Uh, they say, just wanted to say your play style heavily inspired my own. Multi logging irons, hoarding supplies. So thank you for that. And life, bro. the other question is, which game did hardcore mode better, RS3 or OSRS? Ooh. Um, so RS3 kind of convinced everyone that your account is gone once you die, which is a great idea, but it's not true. If you pay like 10 mil coins to some NPC, your account stays an Iron Man when it dies. So really is nothing. I kind of like the idea of the account being like, just you can't log in anymore once it's dead. Mm -hmm. That's a cool idea. I don't know how it'd work for content creators in, in terms of like, if you plan on playing the account when it's dead, then you probably don't want to make it a hardcore because they need to restart for sure. Yeah. So it definitely brings a big risk factor. Um, what RS3 does though, when your hardcore dies, it has lives. I don't know how I feel about lives on a hardcore Iron Man. I do feel like because they don't refund disconnections, maybe a one life would make sense. Because mm -hmm. if they're, if they're not going to do anything about it, then one life would make sense. Because then you're just making someone restart like eight months of progress for literally your own servers being crap. Yeah, which is a very stupid punishing thing. But um, what you, what happens on that account though on RS3 is if you die, you actually keep only your protected items in your in your like inventory and stuff. Your bank, I think, is fine. So when you're PVMing, probably endgame PVM, which is when you die in a hardcore, you would lose everything but your protected items, as if like you were in like the wildy. I don't know if you knew that or not. No, so I, I think some that. people actually PVM with like item protection on, because huh. you keep that extra fourth item then. Or right, unless there's like some weird new item that keeps it for you, but yeah. So if you were bringing like if you're doing like TOB with like max switches, you would say buy the most of those items if you died. You'd keep like your scythe, your Tebow, if you brought those two, and then like one more thing or two more things, and the rest is gone. Damn. Yeah, it's all gone. So that is pretty unique, I think, for endgame PVMing. Because then it makes you wonder, like, do I risk it for the status to, or do I want to keep this stuff if it dies? Because you could always just downgrade to Iron Man and keep all your items. You don't got to lose them when you die. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like imagine bringing, you know, switches to like TOA, TOB, Cox. And I mean, Cox is not dangerous, I guess, but if it was. Yeah. Bringing those switches would be very scary and risky because you'd be risking like two bill nonstop all day long. And then I, obviously if a disconnection gets you, <laughs> you just lose two bill from that. Yeah. Speaking of chambers, you are 12 of 12 on your hardcore, which is, and you got it in like, the, what was it like 600 or 500 KC? It felt like you just had everything. 550, I think it was all Jesus like three Christ. or four plus threes. I think it was. Oh yeah. my God. You're just so spooned. Um, what are your thoughts if you could try to be as like, neutral on it as possible do you think chambers should have always been dangerous or are you kind of fine with the first raid just kind of being like a trial and it's just like eh, whatever it's safe. i don't know any hardcores i think it's it should be safe i think most hardcores think that it should have been dangerous mm. obviously when hardcore came out the people were not that advanced so they were soloing cocks like so well it seemed very ambitious to make that dangerous probably so i think they just made it safe for that reason yeah because it was relatively new still kind of right on right now. Yeah. But um, if they were to ever do it again, yeah, 100% not safe. It would <laughs> never be safe if they re redid it again. Yeah. There'd be like riots if they made it safe, honestly. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. I just remember like when TOB was coming out and like all these like hardcores were like, is it going to be safe like Chambers? And like, no. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> like, what? Like, we're yeah. not going to be able to do it. Like, yeah. uh, Oddly enough, like... Cox is like the most beneficial like items from I the raids, I think. That's the crazy so thing. It's weird that the best one is the freest one. Yeah. Claws, Tebow, Ancestral just collects everything, man. It's crazy. I really do wonder if they were to rework Cox in general, would they have all those rewards there? They would have probably spread them out a bit. Oh, yeah. They definitely would have. But you, it's weird to have Claws and Ancestral in there on top of the Tebow and just THC. This is everything. So, Holy crap. I know, just so much. And there used to be like three other things. Well, obviously, like useless Dragon Harpoon, Sword. And yeah, Dragon those bait and items. Oh, man. That was. I think I only got like two of those bait items because I just started Chambers back when those were in there. And yeah, yeah it's such a disappointment, dude. <laughs> yeah, I got purple. a Harpoon that, like before they updated it. And I was like, what the hell? Like, no, there was really. I mean, I guess the harpoon was still best in slot, but it's like no use for it really. I was like, this is stupid. You see a purple yeah. and you're just like, fuck me. <laughs> yeah, and that, that light baited the hell out of you. At least yeah. not, you can like change the lights now, can't you? Yeah, I don't do it. I feel like it looks a little like 
Yeah, I don't know. I think I only did it for... I think I changed it the color to three items that I don't have. So, or two items that I don't have. So if it was that color, I would know it's an item that I actually needed, but I wouldn't look yet. Mm. So I guess like if you're not done the raid, then I guess that's kind of like a nice way to look at it. But yeah, yeah to be, be fair, if I, if I were to like go back to chambers, I might do some things with the lights, but I really haven't done much since they made all those like cool settings for it. But are you doing two KCMs or no? I mean, yeah, eventually, but like they're real. I don't know. There's like a lot of things. Obviously, I'm like really completionist, but I'm not like in a rush to do anything. If I want to do some, I'll do some. But like, I have other goals in mind first. A lot of them revolve around clue scrolls. So like, what what happened to the uh, million Serachna skills? Dude, the thing about the million <laughs> Serachna skills. Okay, so first off, I don't have as much of that like i don't know there, there's been other times in my life where i've been like extremely addicted to this game you know where it's just i want to play it for like 14 hours a day yeah. uh and like recent like this year as of recent i've made a lot of like lifestyle changes so i'm more like balanced with things and it's been really good for me just like mentally. much better long term yeah exactly and so i don't ever really push myself super hard uh i just try to really prioritize enjoyment over like every anything else but i still have the same sort of goals i just can't get them done as quickly but like you, think you wouldn't enjoy serachnus like casually more i enjoy serachnus the problem is is like it still takes a while to get clue scrolls from there and you can go on pretty big dry streaks and that's just the whole uh fact with doing elite clue scrolls elite clue scrolls take a while it takes on average like 80 minutes to get an elite there and if you go, like, four times rate, you're spending, like, three, four hours sometimes just, like, not getting a clue and just killing Seracnus, which is just, it's not great content, you know what I mean? Just, like, okay. Do you think it's most likely because you're, like, a content creator at this point? So it is. It, it is. It's, you wouldn't, it's hard to just stream the same thing nonstop? Exactly. That is the case. Now, I love streaming clue scrolls. Like, just doing the clue scrolls, it's tons of fun. That's really what I would love. And that's honestly... Stackable clues? Yeah. That would be so much nicer. Like, I would just get clue scrolls off stream and do them on stream. The biggest appeal to the main game is Implings. As much as I, like, disagree with Implings, just the fact that you could just endlessly do clues sounds fun. I talked about that in my ramble, like, recently. I was like, I think it's the most overpowered thing ever. You can just buy clue scrolls. It used so, to be, like, yeah. a very big time spent, and then now oh, it's just free. Yeah. I not free, it. but I let you, you still profit from the actual clue. Yeah. So it's so kind of free. So. In my ideal world, uh, I feel like we're like hard locked with this idea that elite clues always need to be around like an hour plus to get, and most places like three hours plus to get. Yeah. Like I want to like change people's perception on that. Like I would really love it so clue scrolls are shat out just a little bit more commonly. I'm thinking like, I don't know. Like every. Minutes? Like, if you were to do a dedicated thing, like the meta for Elite Clues, I'm thinking like 20 minutes, you know? Like, you can do a piece uh, of content that's pretty challenging, you get an Elite, and yes, obviously that would totally shake up the metas, but, like, why are we still on this thing of, like, Elite Clues can only come every few hours? It bothers me a little bit. And that's my own It would be idea. cool to have, like, a, instead of, like, Implings, it would just be, like, a different activity, but you can get, like, any Clues scroll while you're doing the activity, but the activity doesn't really give you XP much. So you can I, like actively yeah. go for the clue, but you're risking like your time pretty much the whole time. That's I guess really, that'd be very that'd be very like Iron Man friendly, but no, no. But I think you do have a point there. Is like you could have activities that are not meta in any possible way, and you could just make it so those are better for clue scrolls. I was even thinking like if they ever did come out with a clue uh, scroll guild or a clue hunters guild or whatever, like that would be the guild where it's like okay. There are now activities that aren't going to really benefit you in any other way besides getting clue scrolls fast. And yes, you could say, like, that's OP, but, like, bruh, we got fucking like, inklings. Um, like Zolcano, pretty much. It's, like, barely any XP, but you get... Yeah, yeah. Imagine, yeah, like, the drops being mm -hmm. the clue scrolls. Exactly. Just things yeah. like that, and it doesn't have to be exactly that way. I just think clue scrolls in general should be a little bit more common. You could have items, like Rings of Wealth, that can increase those chances if you really care. And... Like the Wildy fucking update there? The yeah, block. but... Oh my god, if they ever made it so, like, elite... It works outside <laughs> the Wildy. Yeah, I, I get worried about, like, making metas for things that aren't PvP-related in the wilderness. It's just horrible. I think that's, like, yeah. so bad. Um, yeah, I did... Um, 
a lot of like hard clues when I was doing the will D uh, collection log thing that, mm-hmm. that like dag and high robes that that was like too many clues for us, honestly. <laughs> well, the, dude, the pro- there'd be times that I'd see two on the ground before I even got back to my screen. I was like, what the hell, man? Yeah. And see that, that's where it would be cool to be able to pick up multiple clues. And that's where presets. Oh my God. If you just had a preset, bro, just yeah, done. that'd be a huge update. Stackable <laughs> clues with presets being, added. What oh, the hell? <laughs> that'd be good. Yeah, that'd be fucking uh, a huge amount of change, that's for sure. Okay, he, here's some topics from a cold one. He has a few, so I'm just going to list them off, and you, we'll just go over them one at a time, I guess, afterward. What kinds of bitches do you like? How how you grind numbers so hard without burning out? I guess we already covered that one. Soup sucks. And best, <laughs> best memory of playing in the glory days. So. Ooh. Number okay. one, F- the females. We don't we don't call them bitches. That's really disrespectful, dude. Yeah, come on, a cold one. Um, in the past, uh, dated Latina girl and probably, probably Latinas. Nice. I, I thought pick. you were just gonna say all bitches, like you're. Uh, oh, I, thought, I, was, I was trying to be serious <laughs> over here, bro. This got hell? real. This got real. He bro. has an actual question. <laughs> <laughs> um. Four. What was the other one? What was what? What soup sucks? Explain. That was like a meme way back in the day. I like I just said. I think I made an account called Soup Sucks Evan. It was like a hardcore. But I changed the name after. Dude, um, you know what the worst uh, feeling is? What? Getting souped on live stream. Oh, I hate that, dude. Yeah, that's the worst. That happens. I, got I don't even yesterday. know why. I'm gonna start doing yesterday. it's like YouTubers be like, "Yo, dude, you'll never <laughs> guess what I got while watching your video." <laughs> <laughs> fucking soup. <laughs> I fucking hate that meme, dude. It's so annoying. <laughs> All right, best memory of playing in the glory days. Was there ever was there a specific memory in the olden days that you just really like? Uh, specific memories, no, but I did really enjoy. Uh, I liked even though effigies are very OP. I liked logging in and doing Slayer and getting like effigies and storing them in your bank and then just opening them all up at one time. Oh yeah, I that- think. Um, I think the, the the records are still on the like the CML website, or whatever it is. <laughs> they, I think I did. They like, take those seriously of just effigies, like spamming effigies. Okay, good. sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I think I had like twelve mil runecraft in like a day from opening up like two hundred <laughs> effigies or something. What the fuck? So dude. I just I just stored two hundred. Took me like probably like a month or two, and then I just opened them all up and I got like four mil wood cutting, four mil fishing, or three mil or two mil, and then like twelve mil runecrafting. God it, 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 damn. As OP as it was, it was very fun to do. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it's probably like the equivalent of like opening up like dragon implings for clues so oh. it's probably like so quick but it's just so expensive yeah so it's probably kind of like that type of dopamine just dude I'm, open those up. i don't know if you've ever heard my ideas like okay so piro piro first of all that place sucks but um they really should come out with a new and improved piro piro which just gets rid of all the wheat fields entirely and I, don't, I, mean, I hate all, they should speed those up with like a higher strength level or some shit it's horrible dude, dude just get rid of them imagine that yeah, just being that. able to freely just run around but you'd have to have completed like the lumbridge drainer diary to get that instance yeah or they could do like uh they could make like agility like obstacles throughout the wheat so you could just like hop over like a little thing and it's like really quickly yeah or just if they, if they didn't want to make like two overpower they just remove them fully they could at least like speed it up in some way my but, my yeah, uh i wouldn't mind them removing it yeah just the removal of it okay so first off you would have to have completed like the diary so bots aren't really there because i mean yes Lum- lumberage lumberage hard minimum probably i'd say i would say lumberage elite to get all wheat fields removed because that in that requires full questcape and no bots are going to be like questing full questcape it really yeah, is just so. like a super high requirement but like the benefit of it of just being able to freely roam and just catch implings sounds pretty nice i don't know yeah, I mean, bots do also like buy accounts or like hack accounts or like hacked accounts get sold, right? So it's like That's those true. might have questscapes, obviously, but the the actual stats of the Lumbridge Diary, yeah, is very high. But I yeah, I, I, I they could just make like a whole new like a level two Piro Piro, and like that would be like yeah. you need like ninety Hunter to enter in Lumbridge Diary or something. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they could do something like that. Okay, Oscar asks, how... Okay, you have to let me know if this is accurate. How does it feel to once be quoted as someone who Link's Titan looked up to? Any contact still between the two of you? Ooh. um, Explain. 
I would say that's an honor because obviously Lynx is uh, one of the goats at this point. I would say. Oh yeah. Uh, maybe not to the same level as like Suomi because like he was just number one for such a long time, mm-hmm. um, and it was like the original RuneScape, I guess. Um, yeah, uh, Forsberg was like not like a close friend, but we were like friends um, back in like the RS2 days. Uh, he didn't play like a whole lot, I don't think, back then. He was doing a lot of runecrafting back then. I think at like uh, ZMI or something like that. I think his runecrafting was always very high. And uh, I think just out of nowhere, he just started playing like a fuck ton. And I think a lot of people noticed it and they were just surprised because it was like, it was like very similar to like Suomi hours that he was playing. Mm. Um, and then uh, I think he just kind of went like not anti-social mode, but like he just didn't really talk too much to people. Not because like he had beef with people. It was just, he just didn't talk as much anymore. But I don't think he's changed as like a person or anything. I think he's still a very nice guy. Um, but I, yeah, I, don't, I haven't really heard much from him in a very long time. Mm. But I would say being mentioned in that was probably an honor. He's definitely surprised me in terms of like, like his achievements and stuff on the RuneScape game at least. So yeah. I would I would say like, uh, I would throw it back at him. Like what he did was pretty impressive. I do wonder how he's doing now though, like in terms of real life. Yeah, I if hope he's, he's, he's all right. Playing a different game or not, or just playing IRL. What do you think uh, about Iron Higer? Him getting almost 200... being done. Sorry. Almost being done. Like, yeah, like, w- like what? What do you? Oh, he's he's collection logging after. You think so, or is that like oh, confirmed? One hundred percent. Okay. I, I think I was already told he was, but if you look at his log on like the collection log website, I think it's already all set up, and he's already been like kind of doing it. I think. I'm dude. He is, in my opinion, I think Iron Higer is like the biggest current gamer. Uh, I don't know how much he plays. I do know that like it seems like main account people do play a lot mm-hmm. um, in terms of like the hours. I don't know if it's still the same or not, but like when the top page wasn't filled yet, a lot of those top pagers are playing like 18 hours a day. So it was like kind of weird to see that. And then most Iron Man didn't play that much. That's but true. he probably is. He probably is one that does play 18 hours a day as an Iron Man. Yeah, I, I think, okay, so it's hard to say, and the reason I say current is just because, um, and again, this is my own view, uh, obviously there has been insane gamers in the past, don't get me wrong, but when I think yeah. of like Iron Higer, I just think he's the first person to get 200 mil all on an Iron Man, and he stayed hella consistent, and on top of that, he was like super active in discord communities setting up ehp rates he was always the guy behind like all the data with like drops yeah i heard about that yeah that, that, that's like really good to hear i'd say yeah he just super passionate about the game and he would literally play in almost every single temporary game mode he was the first to max in dead man mode and he like i remember seeing his names up there too i was like this is the same guy right i'm <laughs> sure most people think like is this the same hire yeah Hi- higher uh what? It had like an A. Yeah, he always like has a bit of a different name, but yeah, mm-hmm. uh, super impressive for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I think that's just happening in the next few days. I think uh, he's probably gonna go for like the biggest like completion account. I'd imagine. I I'd hope unless he gets so. burnt out from collection log. I, I fucking hope so, dude. I, he's at like nine hundred and something collection. I think I already yeah, saw. Yeah, I think I saw that. He's not like yeah. You can tell he's already kind of doing some stuff. You don't get nine hundred without trying some things, you know. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm curious to see how he's. I'm I'm surprised he doesn't make videos. I don't know why he doesn't. Well, he he does have a YouTube channel. He's uploaded a few times, but it's just yeah, like but it's not like a stuff. YouTuber, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, I think uh, if you're in that position, you're playing that many hours. Probably smart to try and monetize it. Yeah, you just, just wonder I mean, if, how even if it doesn't life. work out. It, at least you tried, you know. Yeah, you you wonder how like their life is just normally like if they're already being like funded from it because like can't really work can you like playing there's like like work from home stuff but That's to true. that extent probably not because then you'd have to do something afk at some point i don't know mm-hmm. how much afk he does okay this is a little i don't know if you can estimate this so jeremy asks what is the total xp from all your accounts rs3 and osrs rough estimate how much xp do you think you have i think it's like 20 or 21 it was like kind of calculated recently by uh the, I think his name is July. Like the, the guy on Twitter, he okay. posts like older pictures sometimes of twi- uh, like RuneScape stuff. So History how many accounts is that? Stuff. Roughly. Uh, two, three, four, five, six or seven. And tw- you said like twenty bill, twenty one bill. Yeah, I think I think Jeez, like two of them, two of them have like stats on both games. Yeah, yeah. 
like my main accounts okay. like twitter malal and then 2.2 bill on old school so that account there is like seven point something yeah, though. yeah. that's insane then, though god damn i mean i don't like these days it, i would say it's probably not just because of like how much easier things have gotten you can easily make a bunch of rs3 accounts and just go for 20 bill xp in like a year just play that's five true, accounts afk the hell out the, dude if you <laughs> afk on rs3 you get like a million hour xp like it's ridiculous so I feel like the the twenty bill goal isn't really like even that impressive these days. Yeah. Just because you could actually do it in like the matter of a few years, just play multiple accounts, have them all AFKing really hard, and with RS three, like the methods for AFKing are like hundreds of thousands of XP per hour. Whereas like on old school, they're like twenty k, thirty k an hour AFKing. So it's a dramatic difference. Um. So yeah, but it's around twenty twenty one, something like that. Okay. I'm sure somebody probably does have higher. They just probably do it all in rs3 though i don't know if i'd even count rs3 these days mm. unless it's iron man i'd maybe count rs3 iron man okay this is a little bit change of topic do you think that anybody will ever complete the collection log on old school so, is it, wait how many masters is it i just i don't even know how many it is i've i a hundred thousand <laughs> at least it's gotta be is it even possible if you camp every single impling and we give every impling to one guy like is that even possible <laughs> I mean, it's got to be, the thing is, it's just so many hours. I think, I mean, even if it were to be, let's just be like really, I don't know. Let, let's just say for simplicity's sake, it's 100,000 masters. It's more than that, I'm pretty sure. Uh, plus everything else. But like 100,000, you can only do roughly like four an hour. So that's like 25,000 hours. The issue is it costs a lot of money too, though. You can't just like I know. Buy it's like that. That is assuming you are spamming DMs, like spamming them. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, it's not. Yeah, you'd be opening them up quicker than they can spawn though in the game, wouldn't eh, they? I mean, eh, that's that's <laughs> debate. I, that would be interesting to know of how many DMs are caught per hour in the in the yeah. whole game, all worlds, all Piro Piro, all surface worlds. That's a good question, actually. I mean, I guess if you had to stop to do a master, that would give it time to catch up. Like, but I don't know how long the spawns are. Are they like an hour spawn? Well, the like, thing is, like, how many DMs are just sat in the GE right now in like people's uh, like exchange offers? Like, there's just got to be like hundreds of thousands, if not like. Yeah, probably in the millions. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. That's a. It would be really cool to see some of these numbers. Obviously, it would like fuck the market, but like, I I would love to see. What do you think about the jar change? Eh. I wish they would have gone a different route, but I don't really care that much, mainly because it's just like... It's just one extra item that like is still not completable, obviously. Yeah, it's just dumb. It's just like, okay, yes, the drop rate was absurd, but, like, dude, it doesn't matter, and nobody's going to complete the collection log. I can understand people just wanting stuff, and obviously the yeah, item was absurd. It means, like, one thing can be greened for sure now, as opposed to, like, before. It would yeah, be green, yeah, probably. yeah. So it's fine, but I really wish they had gone about it a different way. I was thinking, like, what if they came out with, like, a little... Zaya gauntlet where the whole idea of the gauntlet is not to give new uniques but just to, to give totems yeah give like tons of totems per hour yeah they could have definitely done like a buff in totems in terms of like um just a straight meta of going for them but i feel like it's just such few people chasing totems in the game it wouldn't do anything you know what i mean yeah like I mean, who after you like just like 10 people collection logging would fucking go for it mm -hmm. like it's yeah it'd be just very few people doing it probably yeah, and because I don't, I don't know what the appeal of like totems is beyond just going for the jar drop, dude. And that's like very end game, even collection logging. Like that's like the last thing you'd probably want to actually actively go for. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. So it, it, the, be pretty dead. Them changing it to one and two hundred at this point, it's like good. It's just over with. Like we can just move on because I feel like for so long there was always this idea that it was gonna get buffed, but we never yeah. knew when. So everyone just was like awkwardly stacking their totems. I just kept sending them like an idiot, but like. I I have like 900 on my hardcore, I think. You still do? Yeah, I, I, I oh. used like 200 like a long time ago, and oh. I stopped doing it because I, like if you disconnect, you would actually die there. That's but now you can use like the Tebow thing, so I didn't, you know. And plus, I wanted to save them just in case I become like a regular Iron Man. Yeah. That's 900 hard through the scrolls I can actually do. Whereas like sometimes deep wieldy ones, I don't really do those. Dude, not only is it 900, but if you were to get the elite combat achievement done, yeah, like that's one in four elites like that's over 200 elites right there oh damn that's that is a lot yeah <laughs> yeah that is juicy dude yeah. oh i would kill for that elites are actually not that bad for a hardcore because there's not like that many wildy steps on them hard clues are just yeah, awful you, ne you never get uh wildy steps with the leads hardly 
Yeah, they f- it feels pretty rare. I definitely don't drop them as much as I drop the hards. Mm-hmm. But I've been doing like some wieldy hard steps just because of the whole like tanking thing. You can kind of like alt now, pretty much. Yeah, and if you're in singles, like you were chilling. Yeah, I still go to like some multi spots, but like uh, like Dark Warriors Fortress one. And oh yeah, if you're under twenty wilderness multi, it's not that big of a deal. You just yeah. hold your teleport, but like yeah. yeah, it's not too bad. Over thirty multi, Jesus Christ, you're on fucking. That's dangerous. good thing I did the uh, I did that like Ring of Wealth thing in the wildy like a long time ago in the hardcore. Mm. The Fountain of Ruin thing. Yeah, it's yeah. multi there, right? I think. Yeah, that's so dangerous. But like, yeah, I did that. You like, know you're long. safe. Like the the actual chance of you dying there. Yeah, yeah, it's very so limited. small. But it's like there still is that chance. But you also know you're fucked if any clan logs, I, and exactly. there's just one guy logs in exactly. barrage of you. He's, his team is coming. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, there's no hope, especially as like an end game hard because yeah, hundred oh, yeah. percent. People see your name, it's over. It's over. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty happy with the jar change. I think. Yeah. I, I, think... I, I, I was like indifferent with it. I was like, I don't really care if it happens. If it, because for me, it's like I'm not going to complete the log anyway. So this isn't like an item that helps me complete it, because it's not going to be completable. So yeah. it was just an extra item. Yeah, it's uh, it's whatever at this point. I'm just, I'm, I'm honestly a little bit glad they didn't touch the stale baguette. I'm gonna be on mainly because I already have one. <laughs> Like, that would I wouldn't mind if they just made that like random more common than the other ones. <laughs> that would be maybe an okay change. Dude, I wish they would actually make all randoms a little bit better at this point. Just yeah, actually like let you do the random without just being like this is a complete waste of time. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't mind if they made it so you can like dis like uh like turn off a random so yes. you never get them. Yeah, that'd be kind of nice. It really is bad at like the like if you do like agility at Artie and someone's random is in front of you, you click on it. Yeah, it's very, I mean I, I have that option hidden now. I don't Yeah, you can probably hide it now, but like back in the day you would just oh, keep horrible. misclicking it. Horrible. <laughs> it's like how is this guy's random like harassing me? Yeah. Uh what do you think about the ring of wealth getting a new drop table? Like the rare drop table being changed? Like a, like rework the whole drop yeah, table? Yeah, just completely reworked. Like that thing is so ancient. Oh my god. Not a bad idea considering you're sacrificing DPS for wearing it. Mm-hmm. Well, so, obviously yeah, you I, don't have to wear it, but yeah, you would get in the the increased drops by wearing it. Uh, if they if they did that, they'd have to make it so you camp the ring the whole kill though. You can't turn it on just like the other ring. You can't take it on and off throughout kills. Oh, I don't really care. If, if somebody wants to fucking sweat switching on rings, like go for it. I don't really care. It's just like, dude, you're getting like one or two maxes. I don't give a fuck. I guess. I, I but, feel like when when they add awkward delays like that, it's just strange because, first of all, nobody was willing in the first place besides, like, 0.01% of the community yeah, that's, yeah. like, going to ring switch. But, yeah. Like, who the hell bracelet switches? Be honest. Like, who? who uh, it depends if you're, if you're in competition. You probably are. That's true. That's true. Don't. But at that point, if you're in competition to get extra GP, like, oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I th- I think it would be kind of cool to it would be you know going back to your effigies like it's just like getting a random drop that's actually cool like oh my god like I just got like a freaking I don't even know what would be like clue scroll right is that the first the only thing you're thinking is clue scrolls <laughs> well I I'm always thinking of those but like as a normal drop thinking of a uh, I don't know what what would be a cool item to come from the new and worth like a rare drop table. Something worth like a tiny bit of money. It's like a small little. See, what would be cool is like uh, yeah, buff every of like the normal rare drop tables, but then have like some crazy shit. Like I don't know, maybe an Onyx or something randomly from like the super rare stuff. Oh, yeah. you mean something like that? I think um, I don't know. Does Iron Street have something like that? I remember they had something weird. I forget, but yeah, like 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 just like a random hundred Onyx bolts or something, and then like a random Onyx and yeah, just something like actually worth it. Like, damn, I hit the rare drop table. It's fucking go instead of just like, oh, I got five rune javelins. Like, huh? oh, they have um, I think yeah, R three has like some kind of necklace or a ring where it, I think it actually triggers. It's like it, it triggers like the random drop table while you're skilling, not just killing things. That would be sick. So it's like while you're doing agility, you just get like a random like drop. That'd be, that would be. <laughs> it'd, be it'd probably be fun, honestly. I forget what the item's called, but somebody probably might know it. But if they're still watching this far. See, I've always thought Slayer is so fun because you're always just getting drops on the ground with skilling. Like you never really get that like cool dopamine. It's always just very static. Yeah, and, that, that, yeah, that is like the only difference between them is 
It's just the same thing nonstop. Yeah, you're totally right, though. Like a ring of wealth or like some sort of effigy sort of thing from boring skilling would be awesome. Just Yeah, I wouldn't mind that. It'd be cool. It'd be probably like a big game changer if you're playing like a lot of hours, obviously, like long term. But short term, it's probably fun. Yeah. Okay, um, we've kind of covered uh, all these topics, so I guess we'll sort of wrap things up a little bit. How many Inferno questions was there actually in the uh, the Twitter? I didn't actually like, look at Twitter. Probably like 17 or so. No. 17, yeah. <laughs> Sounds about right. Uh, I didn't want to cover all. I didn't want to, you know, just it would take too much time to ask all of them. But I do want to ask you, Alkin, for three shout-outs from the community. I did not even say there would be three shout-outs if this is coming out of the blue. But if there's three people in the community you think uh, deserve it, go ahead. Ooh, uh, like content creators or like people that aren't known or what? Just anybody in the community. Somebody that Ooh. you just think is like, I don't know, cool. Just, I don't know. Like, uh, I didn't think about this. Because everyone that's like a content creator is like my friend already kind of thing. So it's like, it's not much of like a shout out. Um, hmm. Shout out to people who find new metas for things. That's pretty cool, I think. Innovators, you know? Okay. I don't know who that would be, though. <laughs> Any uh, <one> specific? <laughs> <laughs> like a RuneScape player, you know? <laughs> shout out to all the RuneScape players. Shout out to the homies playing RuneScape right now while listening, dude. <laughs> all right, let me ask you a specific one. What's your go-to stream if you're watching like a, a Twitch stream? Or like some of your go-to streamers that or YouTubers that you enjoy watching that you've been uh, enjoying recently? Like Amaranth or something? <laughs> 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 no, actually. Um... Huh. I'll always like probably chill in like maybe like Alfie's chat. Sometimes Rake's chat. Hell yeah. Um I'll like if I'm like awake, I'll like chill in Bodies just to see what he's doing normally. Yeah. Um hmm. I mean there's your three if you want if you're struggling. Shoot, I mean I just I kinda like I, I'm probably <laughs> one of those like hoppers. Like I just hop from stream to stream sometimes. Yeah. Just to see what people I'm, are doing. I'm a hopper too. It's horrible. I think most people are hoppers. Yeah. yeah. Just just hop in for like five seconds. But but but, but <laughs> shout out to the dedicated viewers that always stay. <laughs> dude, That's my shout out, dude. Yeah. Dude, I, I I used to have a few streams where I'd actually like genuinely camp there for a couple hours. Now it is, I'm a hopper, man. I just, it's, it's hard to go past like 15 minutes. Yeah, because normally it's uh, streaming content is definitely much more. It's not like the same as YouTube, obviously. But like YouTube is kind of like. You don't have to walk. Like, have you ever tried like fast forward a stream? Because you're like, okay, I, I get what he's doing here, but like, I just want to <laughs> see the loot. You just have, like fast, like where's the fast forward button? But I want to see the loot. Yeah. That's kind of like what it's like sometimes watching a stream. That is true. It's like they're on ohm, so I'm just like, can we fast forward this ohm, bro? I want to see the loot. <laughs> that is so true. It's I, very never, similar. I've never actually done it with a Twitch stream, but you're right. If there's been like a live, it, it always happens when there's like a live YouTube thing going on just like dude i need to like fast forward this like there's no way to it's live like god damn it yeah it's like youtube is like just like the highlights pretty much normally right and then yeah. twitch is like the build up of all those so um yeah but normally like a video just lasts like 10 20 minutes and then it's over right so mm -hmm. streams are kind of always there yeah. well yeah, I, I would say shout out to the people that in any stream that are always there i think they actually make the stream a lot more enjoyable for the streamer for sure Big shout out to them, yeah. Alkin, uh, I really enjoyed uh, this conversation tonight. So, guys, if you are still listening somehow, or no, no, of course people are still listening. They always listen to the whole thing. Uh, down in the description, I will have Alkin's Twitch, Twitter, YouTube. Anything else, Alkin, you'd like provided? Oh, that's probably good enough. All right, guys, go drop him a like down in the description. Also, if you guys enjoy the Sebe cast, you can pledge a pledge, I guess. Well, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Down in the Patreon, $2 a month if you would like to have your name on the title screen and you want to support the cast. Other than that, though, we are going to be having skill specs on the cast next week. So look forward to that. And that will wrap up. One year. up and get skill specs. Oh, yeah. man. Dude, I'm. You could put like a small content here, like Devious <laughs> next, so it still kind of stand out. <laughs> Hey, I mean, at least, well, yeah, no, you, you got a point. God damn it. Well, no, but, in, enjoy that one, I guess. No, I'm, 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 ex I'm super excited. His clips lately have been actually making me fucking roll laughing. Just he, do, he does that. a great job with streaming. I, th I think streaming PKing is very like 
it can be entertaining for sure yeah like you can real skill specs does a great job of it too just like out of control sometimes it's everything's just, spontaneous like it's exactly. not like you're killing ohm like ohm doesn't randomly like spawn a 50 damage on you it's just yep. there's no like so the pking is very different for, for streaming i would say entertainment wise absolutely I agree but, there, but there's definitely a crossover where like people wait we we're supposed to end it aren't we yeah i mean it's wait just... what, one last thing yeah go for it no yeah. people seem to think that like because PKing does so well on like Twitch or YouTube, it'll do well like in general if they update it. But I don't think people, <laughs> I, I don't think people watching yeah. is the same as people want it. Because what what gets the most views on YouTube? Yeah. Tile fucking man mode. Who the fuck's doing tile man mode? Yeah. Nobody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it does not correlate. I just wanted to make that clear for everyone who thinks it does. <laughs> it never will. It never has. You got to point. Being up. updated will not do anything for I... everyone becoming a PKer. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. No, that that's a pretty fair take. And to be honest, I I enjoy watching PvP content all the time. I just yeah. don't do it because I'm just like this is pointless. Like because RuneScape's a grindy game when it's all about <laughs> progressing something, and PKing feels like there's no progress being made. Exactly. All right, yeah. Alkin. Uh, I already uh, well, I already fucking did my little outro. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for listening, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for listening. Alkin, have a wonderful night. All you guys too. Be sure to. Drop a like on the video as well, guys. And sub sub to Alkin first and then sub to me. And uh, we'll leave it there. Guys, have a great night. Peace. Thanks for listening.